Good evening, party people. Welcome back to Dream Daddy. It's Dream Daddy time. What does that mean? We're dating more dads. That's what it means. Uh, let's go to dad book. Where we were last time. It was the last save that we did. Because last time we dated Brian. Now we're going to date Robert tonight. So we're going back in time a little bit. Evidently, things proceed. I've done my research. We can date all of them. It's possible to date all of them. I think if you go back to before the third date, you can kind of... Everything is okay. Everything is preserved. Just fine. So that's the plan. Tonight, we're going to be dating our beautiful boy, Robert. You can't see his face right now because my recipe is so rudely over top of his face. Evidently, if we look through the dad book profile, we see that Robert's favorite movie genre is Italian neorealism. And as a man who enjoys cocktails as much as I do, when I think of Italy, I think of red Italian aperitivos. So tonight, as we proceed with things, we're gonna start with a little side-by-side -side comparison with a couple of these red aperitivos that I found, um, or specifically one that I actually found at the store. Let me move my microphone out of the way. I see a couple of folks out there already. I see Annie and Bloated and Emichel already out there. Hello, everybody. So when I went to the store the other day, I saw this really, really, this, this bottle of red that had a little orange on it. It had aperitivo on it. It had just a really Italian looking thing. It said product of Italy on it. And I was like, this is so weird because it looks really similar to a liqueur called Campari and another liqueur called Aperol. Uh, Aperol is a product of Italy. Campari is also a product of Italy. My Spritz, also a product of Italy. This is a bitter red aperitif. This is a bitter red aperitif. My spritz is a bitter red aperitif. And I took this to the front of the cashier and I told myself that if this were cheap, this is a cheap bottle, I'll add it to my collection of red liquors because we like to add, we like to diversify a little bit around here. And uh, as it turns out, uh, it was only like $20. And so I figured like, okay, well, 20 bucks. That seems like worth uh, worth exploring a little bit. Um, so this is the my spritz bottle. It's the cheapest red aperitif that I think I've ever come across. I think... Campari, the last time I bought it, I think came in at like 30 something. And Aperol, I don't think was any like more expensive than that. But I figured we'd do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. I'm already aware that Campari, for those of you who aren't potentially initiated, Campari is a bitter orange liqueur. It is technically an aperitivo. It's a, it's a bitter spirit. You can use it like you would Amari and Amaro. This is on the bitter side of, let's say, the bitter sweet spectrum. Whereas Aperol, at least from what I understand, is on the sweeter side of things. I, when you taste these two side by side, Aperol and Campari, this is more bitter, this is more sweet, this is a bit less, a bit more orange peel, this is a bit more orange juice, only only slightly though. And I have no idea where this my spritz in the center falls, so I figured now would be the time to check it out. I see Kid popping and saying, pretty sure it's pronounced Aperol and Campari. Is this one my spritz? I would only wonder there. Thank you for popping in, kid. So what we're gonna do is try to see whether or not this my spritz pops in more on the Campari side of things, or whether it pops in over on the Aperol side of things, or whether it kind of falls somewhere in between. And I'm kind of gonna be doing a little bit of a rating to see whether one is more or less good for, let's say, a very simple cocktail. What you could do the with Either one of any one of these is create spritzes out of them. You combine a little bit of this, a little bit of sweetener, and a little bit of Prosecco or some other type of sparkling wine to create the Aperol spritz or perhaps a Campari spritz. Or on the back of this bottle, there is a My Perfect spritz, which is made with seltzer, Prosecco, and My Spritz. I guess you don't add anything else to that. I'm curious to see where this clocks in. I don't really have, I don't really have any Prosecco. I'm not a big Prosecco guy, but I do really like, like a nicely fine made Negroni, which is made with equal parts Campari, or I guess any other red liqueur, gin, and sweet vermouth. But alas, we're playing Dream Daddy tonight, and we must be inspired by what it is that we're about to do. And it seems, obviously, that Robert is also into whiskey. Well, if you remember when the, we first met him at the bar, and I can't remember the name of that bar, we he was asking if we were a whiskey guy we do like shots and i think i recall us saying that we kind of like shots 
love shots. But it was shots of whiskey specifically. So instead of doing a Negroni, which is equal parts gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth, we're going to do something called a Boulevardier to compare these three bitter red aperitivos together, which is exactly the same thing in equal parts, except you use whiskey. I don't know if there's a specific preference of whether you should be using, let's say, a rye here or a bourbon or some other type there. We're going to play around with what we got. Let's see. It's I'm pretty sure it's pronounced your spritz. My spritz, your spritz, we all spritz for spritz spritz. Bar without. Shots, 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 everybody. So actually, what we're going to do first, is we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between these three doodads here. I've got three tiny little sampling containers. They're not quite shots, but we're going to taste a little bit of them all side by side from each other to see which one, which one, the my spritz, is a is comparable to, either on the Aperol side, on the Campari side, or perhaps a whole nother dimension. I'm here. And I hear my dearest coming upstairs because she's actually very curious about what these taste like too. Anna, let me unhide your face for a moment because currently it's hidden behind the recipe. Welcome, dear. Hi. Anna tells me that allegedly she is able to detect or taste red 40 specifically. I and like if you can if you it compare like certain sugars all of these bottles. I was a little shocked to find I read the back of the your spritz, my spritz, we spritz bottle, and I was like, oh, artificial coloring. It's got red 40, it's got yellow six. And then I took a look at the Aperol bottle and I was like, no way. This thing also says it uses yellow six and red 40. And then I looked at the Campari bottle and it too on the back says artificially colored. See, blo bloated dead rats. Bloated dead rats. Absinthe cups. Kind they of. say they can taste red too. So they can't. Things I'm not do crazy. taste red. Oh no no! Like Hawaiian punch tastes red. Some of the Kool Aids taste red. Yeah, they taste like red. Forty. Everyone's saying hi to you, by the way. Right. So let's try. Let's try some of these. We're gonna add a little bit of my spritz, or your spritz. We all spritz for spritz spritz. Probably up to that little to that first line. We don't need too much of that. And we're gonna see what these taste like more or less side like by side Campari? from each other. Do you like Campari? Probably not. Campari is more on the bitter sides of things. So you tell me. No, I don't like Campari. No, I don't like Campari. Okay, okay. Okay, well, you can do the comparisons first if you like. One second. Would you like to try the Aperol? That one's dry. Aperol is sweeter. I don't want you to tell me your tasting notes on this one, actually. Not yet. I'm gonna try it myself. Does Clifford the Big Red Dog taste red? I don't know. Is he artificially colored or is it his natural skin tone? I feel like he would tone? taste like meat. Skin tone, hair tone. What am I talking about? I think this one on top. This one. I've I'm never just... had Aperol by itself. What do you think of the Aperol by itself? Aperol, Aperol. Ah, Aperol. Kool-Aid came out with cherry flavor without red dye. It was the best. No way. Kool-Aid clear? The crystal stuff? I've never tried it. I'm not a big Kool-Aid guy. But there are some recipes out there that use specifically Kool-Aid or Kool-Aid power for your cocktails. Are you gonna drink all of it? No, I don't like Campari. No, don't like Campari? Definitely don't like Campari. Is it a higher alcohol content? Uh, yes. Actually, that is a- So far, yes. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Life and Credence is Crystal Pepsi. I've never had that either. What so your Aperol comes in at 11%, 11 percent alcohol by 24. volume. 24. 24. Campari they, is oh, on the more alcohol. Oh, you should go first, and then side. I will tell you my notes. Let's see how these all taste side by side from each other. I like Campari, so I'm going to start with Campari first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it straight from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I love Campari. Gross. Put the whole thing in my mouth. That's why it's got cam in it. Campari without the X. That one's bitterness covers up any sweet flavor. I it's a bitterness. Eat. It's a. It's, it's bitter. It's a little bit. Bo it's a little bit boozy. That bitterness kind of hides the booziness a little bit. It's not super duper boozy, not noticeably, but it's bitter. It's bitter, it's orange. It's got a touch of sweetness to it. Just just the right amount of sweetness, I think, for some it's very nice cocktails. It's the tart cocktails. part of the orange tart and part? the bitter part that I dislike. I'd say that this is kind of like, if you've ever bitten into an orange peel, oh, I hate that. I'd say it kind of tastes like that. And the whole idea behind the bitter orange here is that there are bitter species of oranges throughout all of the world, I think prominently in Italy, and this is what it's flavored to taste like, or flavored from. It tastes bad. I don't know much about, <laughs> I don't like it. It does not taste good to a sugar addict. I don't like it, I don't like it. Bloated Dead says the solar eclipse is happening in April. Good theme idea for the solar eclipse. There's a game to be played in April. Hmm? Ooh, it could be fun. You eclipse taste cocktails. You're not, Don't you dare tell you're me having you Aperol next Aperol. Time. Now we go for the Aperol, which to me, at least comparatively to a Campari, is usually sweeter. It's a lot lighter. 
It's a lot lighter, and instead of being orange oil, it's kind of almost orange juicy, but it's a sweetened orange juice. This Aperol reminds me most of orange-flavored things. It's like a confectioner's orange. Like orange candy or orange taffy. Orange saltwater taffy. What do you think about that there? I don't think it's really orange. It doesn't have a traditional orange taste in the sense of like, it tastes like confectionery sugar, mm -hmm. but like, I don't like confectionery sugar, but it has like this like dull, how do I put this? It's like a dull sugar base. Mm -hmm. And I, I would even say I had a little bit of the bitterness left over from the Campari. I wouldn't even say that the Aperol tastes bitter at all. No, this is I don't think bitter. there's, I don't think there's anything bitter about Aperol. Well, Not from my taste buds. I don't what do you like, think? Considering I don't like bitter. Oh, Aperol is bitter? Do you, what do you think? Do you think it has a bitterness to it? No. I don't think so either. No, it's very If anything, sweet. it's very, very unnoticeable. Aren't you glad it's Aperol? Are these meant to be drunk by themselves? Well, I mean, it depends on what your pre uh, preferences are, Bloated, oh, no. but just aperti aperitivos are technically supposed, if you have the digestives on one time, and the apertivos on the other side, digestive to liqueurs. I can't quite articulate the differences between one or the other, but one tends to be something that you drink after a meal. They tend to be on the sweeter side. It's something to help you digest your food. Whereas the apertivos, which tend to be a bit more bitter, are the things that ripen your taste buds and get them ready for the meal ahead. So you could drink these on their own if you want to. That one's my favorite. That's your favorite? It's the sweetest. The My Spritz has the same alcohol content as the Aperol. Yeah. And it says specifically, I think it says bitter on it. Does it say bitter? I don't think so. It doesn't taste bitter. Nothing on here says specifically bitter. Here, I'll look. But we'll see. But we'll see. My spritz. Smells a bit like the Campari. Not like the Aperol. No, it doesn't say anything about bitter. So say it's, it's a very, citrus and herbs. Very low, very low bitterness. Tastes a lot like Aperol. Like, very close to April, but not as sweet. So, I think when it comes down to it, like, that one has a slight tartness in comparison to this one. The sweetening factor is definitely the Red 40 in all of them. However, I can't get over the fact that this is bitter to be Ooh. able to, like, really identify where the Red 40 taste is. Red 40 to me is like, it's like, it's, it's the epitome of fake sugar, and I think that's the only way I can describe it. Because, like, sure. I have straight-up sugar, and then it's like, oh, now add, like, this extra sweetness on top of it, and I don't know how else to describe it. No, oh, I understand that. Yeah, so, like, these are very much, like, I can taste the red for you. This one is just bitter. So Would I you definitely say that these two significantly sweeter yes. than this one? Well, and this one these two basically not bitter at all. This one's slightly bitter. Just a very tight, I don't think that one's slightly like, tightness. That one feels, like, smoother okay. on the tongue. Okay. So now, on your teeth. Wait. Red Forty leaves almost a film on your teeth. <laughs> I was like, "Wait, are you sure?" Is that and the then little? I touch my teeth, and I'm like, "Oh, that's." Is yeah. that the? That's the sugary feeling that I get from things. That's it. has got a texture to it too. Brandy and cherry can be used as a sherry can be used as after meal drinks. You're absolutely right. So this one has like the orange peel. Yeah. Yeah. This one's orange peely. This one's the most orange peel, but bitter. This one's orange peel, but sweet. And this one. I don't have an equivalent taste to it, but it's sweet. So to sum up our kind of comparison between them totally straight, we're also going to try them as Boulevardiers, which is with equal parts of this. Well, you are. I'm sweet going vermouth upstairs for that whiskey. part. I'm going to be doing that. I know you don't like those things. But we'd say that both the Campari <laughs> and the My Spritz, so long, dearest. Thank you for sure joining us. I wanted to taste the, the Red 40. And so she did. And now we know that the My Spritzes are her, her favorite, which means later on... I know you're not a big fan of Prosecco, but you might want to try these as Aperol or My Spritz Spritzes. Maybe. We'll see. But so, these two happen to be a bit more orange peel-like. These two have a little bit of a bitterness to it. The Campari much more prominently than the My Spritz. The Al Campari has like twice the alcohol level, so there's definitely something else at play there. And the Aperol has a sort of, I'd say almost like, confectioner's orange flavor to them, but Aperol and My Spritz taste very, very similar to each other, albeit I think the My Spritz has something else there, another flavor that honestly my palate is interpreting as almost vanilla-like, because I would think that the My Spritz is a little more orange cream, the Aperol is a bit more sugar orange, and the Campari is a bit more orange oil. 
and I look forward to seeing what they taste like in their respective Boulevardiers. Boulevardiers are, again, a variation on the Negroni, which is usually gin to sweet vermouth to bitter red liqueur, like Campari. Um, you could use Aperol in them, but notably one will be sweeter than the other, a little less on the boozy side. They're, they're nice cocktails. They're great cocktails because they take a lot of different boozy materials and put them together in a way that works really, really well. And I opted for the whiskey in this case for two reasons. One, because... One is because Robert likes whiskey and we're playing Dream Daddy. So we're going to go with whatever his preferences happen to be there. And the other reason, too, is I've been reading through uh, a couple of cocktail books, one of them being the Cocktail Codex. And I was informed by this book that, uh, at least according to the people who ran the Death & Co. bar, that Carpano Antica Sweet Vermouth is a vermouth that plays really, really well with Age spirits, because I believe this is a, an Italian sweet vermouth as opposed to being, I think the other style is a French vermouth, but don't quote me on that. I'm not quite an expert on it yet. So I really wanted to see how this would work as a sort of, because uh, as a sort of Boulevardier analog, because usually I make my own Negronis with the Carpano Antica, but I've been recommended it for Manhattan specifically. And now this other book says it's recommended for age spirits, such as your whiskey bourbons and whatnot. So I'm curious to see whether or not this plays a dire role there. I don't have a, another sweet vermouth for comparison, but that might be something I compare on another episode at some point, because I'm kind of curious to see how one plays well with one, and one plays well a little bit better with the other one. So let's give that a try. Let's take our little glasses over here, do a little bit of cleanup. The bucket's always down for a taste, and I'm gonna be doing these in half proportions. Instead of doing a full base ounce for each of these, I'm gonna serve them up instead of over an ice cube into three little tiny containers that I've got chilling in the uh, freezer right now. And then we're gonna do a little side-by-side -side comparison and garnish them accordingly with a little garnish that I made the other day that I'm happy to share with you. So let's first prepare ourselves for three different cocktails. I'm gonna grab three tiny old-fashioned glasses. They're not tiny. They're just being used as tiny stirring glasses. I'll grab some ice and I'll put them in our makeshift stirring apparatus. I can see that my glasses are nice and chilly. I'm just gonna tell you to kind of take a bunch of little cubes, as many as I feel like are necessary for the dilution process, and put them all in here. We're gonna use these old-fashioned glasses as if they were mixing glasses, because they kind of fit. And I'm not really putting a lot of liquid in them. I'm not doing whole cocktails. I'm kind of doing half proportions. And the glasses that I'll be using to actually um, serve these in are also cute and tiny and have never actually had a chance to use them before. So I really want to give them a try. So what we're going to add to each one of these is half an ounce of our bourbon to start with. I'm going to go with this Cleveland whiskey. It is kind of a fake bourbon because it is aged rapidly. I see kid out there popping in with a little tiny bit celebration. <laughs> Thank you for that one. This is for all the for all the Campari lovers. The next one will be for the April lovers. That was for Anna, not you. Well then, she's she's all the way gone now. Maybe she'll realize it. That was delayed. Hmm. I think that's on you, not on me. So we're gonna add our fake bourbon. It's it's a it's not a it's not a it's not technically a fake fake bourbon. Uh, but this is a rapidly aged whiskey, and it is still able to use the bourbon label, bourbon whiskey, uh, as opposed to just bourbon bourbon, I suppose. But that's kind of interesting. So we'll take a half ounce, or about 15 milliliters is the base I'm using for all of these, and I'll just kind of put half an ounce in each one of these containers. And then we'll do the same for our sweet vermouth. And then we'll do the same each for our aperitivos, our bitter red aperitifs. Today is a beautiful, beautiful Monday. How is everybody doing out there? Got our bourbon. We'll grab some sweet vermouth. We'll add that as well. I'm adding so little liquid to these containers, and I wonder if the sheer amount of ice that I've added is going to potentially over dilute these. I'm not so sure. I did measure in the containers that we're using, and they do comfortably fit 1.5 or about 44 milliliters, 1.5 ounces or about 44 milliliters of liquid. I am running very low on my sweet vermouth, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna grab my, I really gotta stop putting my, um, oh, where's my, oh, my argon gas is behind me. 
I was gonna say, I really have to stop putting my our, my inert gas in front of me because it's difficult to get to and I've been using it a lot. So evidently, I took a piece of my own preferences and uh, I just stuck it behind me. <laughs> and that's great. We'll put our sweet vermouth away. There's a little bit left of it. Most might have to go to the liquor store and buy a little more. Or the, just the supermarket. So let's see what we'll do. We're gonna do... Let me label these accordingly. Well, I'll label the glasses after the fact. I'll do the Campari first. Let's move this microphone out of the way so I got a little bit of space. We'll do our Campari. We'll do our My Spritz. And we'll do our Aperol. Aperol, Aperol. What's the gas do? It is an inert gas. Some weird proprietary combination of like argon and stuff that floats over top of the surface and is supposed to reduce oxidation. I don't know if it works, but I believe it. So in glass number one, we'll place our Campari. Higher proof, more bitter, orange peel-like. In the second glass, we'll do, actually there's a, there's a it's a potent one, so I think I'm gonna wipe this out first to try to mm, prevent as much of the bitterness from transferring in as possible. Then we'll do my spritz in the center. It's got one of those pour helpers on it. I guess it kind of helps. Cute. And then in the final glass, we'll do Aperol on the sweeter sides of things. Very similar to the my spritz. So I'm curious to see if that similarity translates into our Boulevardier. And this last one will have Aperol. Small proportions. I tend to pour a little slower on those ones. Do you have a rich, do I have a rich helper? A rich helper? Like somebody who's like, like wants to give us a bunch of money so that the show functions well? We have benefactors. I'm not at liberty to accompany my poor helper. Oh, the one who pours. Oh, I see. It's another pun. I was just thinking, actually, earlier today, kid, that with this dad energy I have going on here, if you haven't, if you can't tell, I haven't shaved for four days. I'm growing out. I'm trying to grow out a beard for this playthrough. That I still don't have a pun horn, uh, and I need to find one at some point. If anybody has recommendations for cheap. Horns that look like they came from an animal, but hopefully did not come from an animal from like Amazon or something like hit me up I'm in the market for a horn a pun horn specifically So now that we have these going We're gonna cause a mess with our stirring spoons. I grabbed four of them, but I don't need four of them So I'll grab the, <laughs> grab the three tallest ones show idea taste test with wine with the gas or not We'll gas will add the gas to some stuff that's been sitting for a while and then see how it goes. I don't think I'm gonna have a very easy time stirring these all at the same time. But we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna try my best to stir these. I'll do I'll do the the twofer. The twofer here. There we go. <laughs> maybe there's a maybe there's like a rhythm that I gotta get into here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Okay! Okay! All right, I'm not doing this. It's not, this is not the best technique, but it's kind of working. You know, if there are actual bartenders out there who have recommendations for how to do this better, by all means, hit me up. <laughs> oh my gosh. These have been kind of sitting for a while anyway. I don't necessarily think that we need every single one stirred completely, but... It does get easier. The longer you stir, the easier it gets. All right, I feel I feel good about that. Technique, technique. Where's the SpongeBob thing with like te technique? We got all of them. And now, obviously, the last thing that we need to do is you actually need to put these into our glasses. So let's go for it. Uh, I do the cocktail. Let, let, let's see. How does does the cocktail angle work for this? Let me see. Can we make this look? Good? <laughs> it's freaking upside down. Oh my god. Can we flip you around, please? Up, upside down, other way. Can we do other way? Watch out, everybody. We're going for a ride. No, do we not? Can we? Can we not? No, we're not gonna flip. Oh, okay. Well, that's wacky. 
doesn't usually do that. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Can we get this in such a way? Ooh, shoulder squeezes. Thank you, kid. Thank you so much. Okay, that's a good angle. That is a good angle. Where'd my recipe go? There it is. That's how you make these things. Oh, let's do... I, this is an awkward, awkward angle for shoulder squeezes. So let me... There we go. There we go. Now I'll start doing shoulder squeezes. As I go get our chilled glasses from the fridge. Freezer. I have to be careful about these. You can tell. You can still see. I am absolutely doing my shoulder squeezes. As one does. Off screen. There we go. Ooh, save the squeezes while stirring, please. <laughs> All right. Got some chilled glasses here. I'm just gonna pour them into a one by one. You're kind of looking like you're in the back. Let's I'm getting my grubby little fingers all over this. This is a funny looking angle. What do y'all think about this? You've had a lot of fun with that. Let's do some storage. Storage. What am I talking about? I'm trying to strain. Oh, don't get caught. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. It's awkward to do this. Oh my god, my microphone is in the way. Here we go. So we have Boulevardier number one with Campari. Wash line. Set. One with the red. Grab another one. Pop this on top. These strainers were not meant for these glasses. Oh! There we go. We'll strain this one. Looks like it's got a lighter color to it. The Campari is a deeper red, at least from my perspective. And these glasses actually look a little different too. Is this for romancing the vampire daddy? This is not for vampire daddy, daddy Annie. This is for Robert, our uh, tall, dark, and handsome daddy. Cause he likes whiskey and Italian neo, neo, Italian neo realism, I think was the genre of movie that he liked. There we go. And then we have our April. As our wash line and all these, they're just about the same. I'm actually very impressed by that. I'm happy with that. All right. Now, finally, we conduct the garnish. And our garnish this evening are some spiraled orange peel, or spiraled orange peels. I figured out how to, I found this on a TikTok. And essentially you take these and put them around dowels and you put them in a dehydrator. It's actually that simple. And I make them larger so I can split them and conduct them accordingly. Let's see, how's this looking? How much needs to be in there for this to balance properly? There we go. Now, please note, if you add spirals like this, it's gonna make your drink a bit more bitter over time. I'm a fan of the bitterness, so I'm happy to keep it that way. And we'll see how it continues to bitter the drink as we conduct the stream. Here we go. These beautiful little garnishes. Beautiful little garnishes. A couple of cute collection of boulevardiers for us to enjoy and for us to savor. So this is three different boulevardiers. We have one utilizing Campari, a bitter orange liqueur, clocking in at about the 20% ABV, ABV range. It kind of tastes like Let's say like bitter orange peel. We have my spritz, which is a cheap red liqueur that I found at my liquor store the other day, clocking in at about 11% ABV, just like your Aperol. It's sweeter. It's got a taste that is similar to like the orange oil, but it's got a little hint of like vanilla there. It honestly reminds me of the taste of Cointreau a little bit, which has got a triple sec with notes of vanilla to it. And then we have a final Boulevardier that's using Aperol, which is on the sweeter side of the red aperitivo lines, all from Italy, also at 11% ABV, and most known for the Aperol Spritz. And we're going to try them all side by side together in Boulevardiers and see if we can determine any differences uh, between them. Can we tell? I, I think I can tell which one is which, and I'm not doing like a, a blind taste there. And I think that would be pretty cool if I figured out a way to do that. Greg from How to Drink did, just did something like that. We figured out a whole blind taste testing setup. It was actually kind of cool. So let's see. I want to try... The Campari Boulevardier first, 
because I love a Boulevardier, I love my Negronis, and I've gone through at least two bottles already of Campari on my own because of how much I love the Negroni cocktail and a Boulevardier consequently. Ooh. Ooh, Disney Queen could totally randomly order them for the blind taste test. She's to totally good. This Boulevardier has a bitterness to it. This is very, very pleasant. It is c combines with those vanilla notes from the bourbon, the vanilla -y notes from the sweet vermouth. There's a bit of cherryness going on there that gels well with those orange notes. And it doesn't have very much a smell to it. It's boozy, and I can taste it. And that bitterness hangs on my tongue in a very, very noticeable way. It's very familiar, too, because that's exactly what Campari does to every drink that it touches. For our My Spritz, I'm going to save that last because I want to see how the Aperol tastes, which I know is going to be sweeter, and it's going to be a slightly different type of orange than the other one. I'm wondering to see if this complements the vanilla notes from the sweet vermouth and the whiskey. This one smells like an orange. This one does have a noticeable smell to it. Mmm. It's sweeter. It's definitely sweeter. There's not really much of a bitterness here. And this tastes like sweet vermouth plus orange. It tastes like the orange sweet vermouth, which is different than what I tasted for the original Boulevardier because in the Boulevard the Campari Boulevardier, those orange notes are not as pronounced and it gels a bit better with the flavors from the sweet vermouth. Whereas this, I can very particularly taste the sweet vermouth in comparison to the Aperol, almost juxtaposed to it. The whiskey notes are present, but I think they kind of combine together with the sweet vermouth and it's not super duper noticeable. But I've definitely had, I feel like now that I think about it, I've had a Negroni before that must have used Aperol instead of Campari because that Negroni I had that I'm thinking of tasted very, very orangey and is the very similar orangeness, oranginess that I'm getting from this Aperol Boulevardier, which is not what I was expecting because I remember after having that drink, it sticks out in my mind. I was like, wow, this is so incredibly orangey. How do they do it? They might have added a little bit of Aperol to it. And fun little lesson if you're trying to like recreate the bar, the drinks that you get at the bars that you go to. A little fun. I don't usually do that, but if I had to pick one, that might be it. And next, we'll try our My Spritz Boulevardier, which I think is going to taste like the Aperol one. Well, let's see. Hmm. It was very interesting. Very light smell on this. Kind of smells a little like the orange, not Kool-Aid, it kind of smells a little like the orange, um, what do you call it? Gatorade. It's the Gatorade. Oddly enough, the flavors balance a bit better with the My Spritz than they did with the Aperol, which is very, very interesting. I'm actually going to go back and see. Sweet vermouth. Sweet vermouth and orange. This one is... brighter it's it's actually it's a it's a brighter cocktail as opposed to as opposed to with the aperol with the my spritz it actually gels those flavors of the sweet vermouth and the whiskey and the you know the aperitif together and it does leave a very albeit a bit thick but pleasant aftertaste and i think i think there's bitterness there i need to cleanse my palate a bit but i feel like there is a little bit of bitterness there I'm gonna go for that one again. Very slight. Very, very, very slight. So, we've tasted so far, we've tasted a Campari Boulevardier, a My Spritz Boulevardier, and an Aperol 
April Boulevardier all side by side. And what I can definitely say is I really like the way that flavors blend with the Campari. It is a tried and true combination. It gels well with so many other spirits and gels so it's just so prolific in the cocktail world and for good reason it is bitter it imparts a bitterness into the cocktail that is undeniable but the bitterness is a nice stark contrast and it allows the drink to evolve a little bit as it sits in your mouth as it combines with those other flavors the aperol on the other hand it's a lot sweeter it stands out in the boulevardier and really knocks those flavors out of balance a little bit i can very clearly taste the sweet vermouth which makes me believe that the aperol is bolstering those flavors of fruit or even some of the more acetic qualities of the vermouth which is you know for a variety of reasons um, and then the nice spritz actually is as well as gelling as the Campari when it comes to the Boulevardier, but also gives those amplified sweet fruit notes while making the cocktail a bit brighter with the tiniest bit of bitterness on the end of the drink's evolution. So if I have to pick a favorite out of all of these based off of like the campari is my de facto favorite i love campari and what it does for cocktails like this the aperol is not i'm not actually a big fan of when it comes to these boulevardiers i actually really do like this my spritz especially when it when it comes to this boulevardier and i was actually really surprised about that because i was thinking that maybe if it was on the cheaper side then it wouldn't do as good but when you have all these laid out like this like it's interesting to see what comes out on top I'll be sipping on these for the rest of the stream. Just continue sampling the differences between these particular iterations. So this is a little bit of a... I don't usually... I don't usually do things like bottle reviews and stuff, but I really, really wanted to taste the comparison between these ones because they all fit into the same category in the, the bar with the Nexus little liquor cabinet, which sits below the bar. And I kind of needed to figure out, like, do I, do I stock them separately? Do I put one in the closet? Like, what do I do for the purposes of organization? It occupies a slightly different purpose for your red aperitivo cocktail ingredients, which is actually very, very interesting. And I'm actually really happy that we were able to taste that today. So thank you all for sticking around a little bit while we did this little comparison. I greatly appreciate your presence. We're going to get back to the game now and continue conducting our evening in the Dream Daddy, sa in the Dream Daddy fashion. We're dating Robert tonight. And Robert is apparently into, what is it, Neo-Italian, Neo-Italian movie flicks, I believe, which is, which is why I even picked this to begin with. There's not much else cleanup that I have to do, so I think we're pretty good on that. As we pop into this, let me grab that thing that I used to showcase multiple cocktails. I grabbed two of them the last time because I was able to put two of the different, we were doing a side-by-side -side last time too with a smoked Manhattan versus a non-smoked Manhattan, and I think it actually worked out really, really well. That was a just that was a stark, stark difference in flavor, and I was completely surprised. Um, I tr I try to put all these on top of each other, but I'm just not. I'm not gonna do that. I'll put the my spritz up. I was pleasantly surprised about that. So, and I'm gonna take this garnish, and uh, no, I'll keep it there. I want to see how that bitterness evolves over time from the bitterness of the orange peel as it continues to sit in the glass a bit. All right. So next we're dating Robert Small. Robert Small would take a gun with them to a desert island if they were stranded on there. Don't talk to him about turn-ons. What do you want to be when you grew up? A grifter. I don't know what a grifter. Alexa, define grifter. Or just completely ignore me as you usually do. No movie genre, Italian neorealism. What's your favorite date? Grave robbing. Yeah, it's a great. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. What do you never leave home without? At least four knives. You gotta have all this stuff on you. Every single knife. You ever <laughs> spend a lot of time thinking about, you ever really look into a rabid animal's eyes? You ever really look into a rabid animal's eyes? Rabid animal's eyes. There's no apostrophe there. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Well, this is interesting. Off to continue with our dream daddy -age. Make sure to sweep under your tent so you don't sleep on rocks. That's a quality tip. Don't leave your garnish in the glass for too long. If it would bit otherwise bitter your cocktail. Unless you like it that way. That's what we learn. Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice and ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I tap out a message to him on Dadbook. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? Question mark. I sit there for a couple of seconds, hoping he'll message me back. 
Hey, it says that he read my message. I don't see the reading indicator, though. <laughs> I anxiously wait for a response. Suppose I'll just watch cat videos on the internet. That's the proper thing to do. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos, and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe, like, my 30th cat video, Robert pops back up into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's just busy. I might as well make the best of my day. And continue sipping on a spritz. A boulevardier of sorts. That's the recipe over in the corner. I put it up every once in a while. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down and turn on the TV. I will watch the Food Channel, because they sometimes have cocktails. Ooh, meat hell is on. With meat cocktails, maybe. You have ten minutes to cook a five-course meal that it must include these ingredients. Steak, lemon meringue pie, paper clips, and a hammer. If you are unable to finish cooking, or if any of those ingredients are absent from the dish, we will release the wolves. Oh my god. I'm not kidding. Please help us. I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. <laughs> I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch. Uh, well, I guess it's time for the old chef with an X to cook a gourmet delicacy. I hope it's mac and cheese. I walk over to the refrigerator and I open the door. Mac and cheese? The mustard? I microwave eggs? Does that do anything? Can you just microwave an egg? This seems easy enough. Wait, no, 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 wait, wait, you're specifically not supposed to microwave eggs, I think. I put some eggs in the microwave and set the timer. Uh, I, I feel like just a minute is fine. You could always put it in for more minutes, you know? The eggs come out pretty okay. They're a little rubbery, but I'm apathetic enough to hark them down. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more. Bored? When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off the door. I would really, it would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spent a couple of minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam! I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the neck. Crowd grows wild. And welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway, and I forgot the rest of the words of the song. No look behind, n no look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on, no look behind the back hook shot. Aha, uh -huh. aha, uh -huh. everyone's on their feet. Something, something space jam. It's your chance, do you dance at the space jam? I managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before Amanda comes home. And then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped Toddler Tournament. With children? What? What if you have in front of you is a molecularly disconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demiglaze with creme froche, of course. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Are we bad people for watching this? Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Ding! What's that? Oh, you probably just got a message. Amanda and I walk over to the computer and check Dad book. It's a message from Robert. <laughs> you up? What are you doing? Why? W-Y-D. What does that mean? What are you doing? What am I doing? You're just chilling. Uh. I. I'm just chilling. I type back. Just chillin'. Amanda deletes the G and hits send. I'll make you look cooler. It'll make you look cooler. A couple moments pass by, another message pops up. Yeah. Wanna grab a drink? Hey, that means he wants to hang out! I know what that means, Amanda. But it's kinda late. Come on, Pops, live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. Ah. Well, it's your life, but I think you'd have a lot more fun tonight. You're trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Ugh. Fine. I type back a message to Robert asking for details, and he tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Oh, don't wait up for me. I never do. I throw in a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Hopefully a lot warmer than it is here in Philadelphia right now. 
I walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of bar flies drinking beer, watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey, man. How's it going? Hey, buddy. Ah. Ahoy there, Skipper. Robert and Mary are here? Uh-oh. Huh. I brought Mary along. Figured we needed a drinking buddy. Oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. I have to deal with this weird married lady making t passes at me. Don't look so scared, kiddo. Just having a drink. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What are you having? Uh, whiskey, bro. I got whiskey in my glass tonight. My dad after my own heart, huh? <laughs> Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. This is not what I was expecting my night to be starting out with. Hmm. Here's to bad decisions and relaxed moral values, fellas. What have I gotten myself into? We all knock back the shots. That's a cocktail. Still tastes very pleasant. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Somehow being able to piece it away from the my spritz apertivo and the sweet vermouth. Holy hell, it was a kick. I look over at Robert and Mary who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. What? Oh. The night's young, chief. Come on. We're bar hopping. Oh, all right. I like to hop through bars. We leave the bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So, where are we headed? Irish I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiskey to my heart. <laughs> Part of the lowest form of humor, Cameron. Try harder. Ouch. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Uh -huh. Jesus, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. Oh, he's standing up for me. It's so kind of him. We walk into I wish I were drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Next round. What are you having? I mean... <laughs> Whiskey hasn't failed me yet. Do they make fruity Irish cocktails? I'm here looking for inspiration. And if they do fruity Irish cocktails, I want to know what it is. Although I don't think it is gonna be anybody's gonna like that. I want to know what it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. I'll save and then we'll go back to it because I just want to know what the fruity Irish cocktail is. If they'll tell me, if they'll tell me, I'll take it. Nope. Alrighty then. That's fine. That's fine. No fruity Irish cocktails then. That's fine. That's fine. We'll just we'll just go back to it. It's, it's totally fine. No fruity Irish cocktails. Whiskey. Let's do it. Robert is such a hater for that. Seriously, why? How could you hate on a man for wanting to explore his mouth and, and the the taste buds that live inside of it? If you could even call them living, really, um, you know. Robert orders three more glasses of whiskeys, and we post up at a garish green booth. Mary slides in and sidles up next to Robert, which makes me breathe a bit of a sigh of relief. Mm. Let's sip this one. Why don't we? Mm. Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp, and then burps very loudly. Hey. That'll put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of grace and beauty. Mm. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Mm. Hey! Cameron, be a deer and get us another round, will ya? Mm. I don't know how to process this evening at all. So I, I get up and I order yet another round of drinks from the bartender. And as I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a very lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. And I don't think I've ever seen the guy smile, like, let alone laugh. I take a seat across from the booth from them and I pass out the drinks. Hey. So Edith's kid snuck some pot brownies under the table at the last bake sale, right? I spot that little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act, so I go up to Edith with the baggie, and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden, she just freaks out at me. You ruined the bake sale, she says. I should have put the PTA president. You roots are bad. And that, 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 that. So what'd you do? I told her to have a brownie and everything was going to be fine. <laughs> they both erupt in laughter and <laughs> politely follow along with the story. She ate three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a funny one. So funny. Hmm. 
She called the cops and told them that the time had stopped. Yeah. Mary looks directly at me. Do you smoke weed? What? Mm. You know, devil's lettuce. Uh, uh, mm. I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. What a blaze. Uh, uh, <laughs> you with the feds? <laughs> you want to <laughs> ask me if I want to <laughs> do the... <laughs> I worked hard for what I have. Are you with the feds? <laughs> no two bit corner boy is gonna drop the dime on me. <laughs> I'm an I'm cool. So you take what you're pushing somewhere else and I'll keep running my business the way I want it run. What? Remember, you come at the king, best not miss. Jesus kid, dial it back. How <laughs> was that was that interaction? <laughs> I love it. Robert, look at your beautiful face. Oh my god. And he's like, OMG, oh, I thought she was the religious lady. Oh, so much for that cross around her neck. Well, I suppose even a god-fearing civil civilian could smoke the devil's lettuce every once in a while. Hey. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm. Lay off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Hey. Fine, fine, fine. Hey. We sit around and sip our drinks. Hey, hey, I know, I know. People watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Your jokes become much funnier and much less scary. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I, I just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Maybe we just go ask her to smoke the weed that she clearly has. Also, I thought we were drinking whiskey. She's holding a glass of wine. This is the glass of wine. That's hilarious. Isn't Joseph wondering where you are? That feels like a low blow. Or instead, how about a threesome? Oh, for sure. Obviously. Oh, interesting. Thank you, mods. You know, my secret message says that I have now added the permitted term. I have now added threesome as a permitted term. How about foursome? <laughs> Let's say, could you get the next round? <laughs> Mary <laughs> may come to regret that one day. How about, how about you get the next round? Trying to ditch me, pal? Uh, no. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Cameron wants alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue their prey. Huh? Now, if you fellows will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth in with a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Ugh. Deuces, nerds. She gets up and saunters away. To a younger looking guy at the bar. I wonder if the younger guy is Jesus. I... She grows on you. Does she, though? I, I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Uh. Well, she does. But what about her and Joseph? Mm. What about him? Y you know... They're married, and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night, and uh, I, I gestured to her across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at the young guy from before. He looks like he's being held hostage. Oh. Oh. That's just the thing she does. She's harmless. Tell that to the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. This all grows on you like a tumor. How far are we into this stream? I've finished my drink already. <laughs> well, it's a damn good thing I've got another one. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. <laughs> That's what he says. He says, ha ha. I, I got him to laugh. He, said he did the thing where he did the... <laughs> with his mouth. Oh, man. You know, I pegged you for one of those straight lease types. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I got pretty wild back in my day. Still got a little wild in you. I have a child. I have a child I need to care for. There's so much wild in me. You know it. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait. I didn't want to see that. No. No, I didn't want to. I wanted to do the child thing. Wait, wait, wait. We're going back. We're going back. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going back. I'm going back. It's the whiskeys, bro. It's got to be the whiskeys. It's the whiskeys, bro. I am not missing that opportunity. I can't. Oh my god. 
Not yet, but first let's go back to your place, and then there'll be will, it, will it be wild in me. Get it? That's sexual, bro. Mm. Devil's lettuce. What was I saying the last time? Uh, feds. And then we make it weird and stuff, and then we do this other kind of thing and whatever, and you know, and we get a thing, and they're like, can I get get the next round? Get out of here, Mary. Let me screw with him or conduct the screwage. Oh, you know it. Robin orders a couple more rounds of shots. I go, what am I getting myself into? This is going to be so awesome. Think you can go for shot for shot. There's only one way to look cool here. So I grab the shot closest to me and I down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes a shot and he knocks it back. That's one. So, what do I even talk about? He's cool. He probably hates small talk. Maybe I should just take a shot of his. Uh. So how are things? I I hate small talk. Okay. Hmm. Too many people. This isn't necessarily you, but too many people think they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. Dude, I had a very similar mental quarrel one time when I was sitting in the car with my father. It was pleasant. Hey. You want some unsolicited advice? Just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Yum, yum, yum. All right. Oh. Robert and I sit in silence. And drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing, darts, spilling, beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Maybe silence is nice sometimes. Say you ever kill a man? <laughs> Excuse me? You know... Watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes, their dreams, draining away every memory and experience they've ever had. Gone. Uh, uh, no. Hey. Great. Me neither. Robert knocks back his shots and much for me to do the same. Mm. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> or am I? <laughs> we continue sipping out of the whiskey people watch some more mary has her set eyes set on another man after the other one excused himself to the bathroom and i assume crawled out the window gosh this whiskey's hitting me pretty hard gosh this whiskey's hitting me hard you betcha Robert gets up out of the booth. <laughs> he just said it out loud. Shouldering his jacket. Let's roll. Sorry. Whiskey. Inside voices. Oh. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Huh. Brother, Mary's gonna be just fine. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. We make our way out of the bar and back into the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. Oh, Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet and like this is the first time I've ever been drunk before. <laughs> Where to? Mm -hmm. You'll see. I follow Robert through the street lab side of lights, so we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, sex shop, computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years, and finally a liquor store. Hey. Wait here. I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. He sits on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. I take a sip. White Zivendel? What? Nothing. I, I just, just wasn't expecting. It is delicious. Fruity. Refreshing. Don't judge me. I start to say something. Then I consider the lecture about valuing silence. Stop. I sip on my wine. And we watch the cars roll by.
Let's start rocks and shit. <laughs> what? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes throughout the empty parking lot. Mm -hmm. That felt good. He presses a stone into my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't... I don't really know about this. Oh. With feeling. I look at the rock in my hand, and I look at the stop sign. Back at the rock in my hand, and back at the stop sign. I know it has to be done. I got a problem with authority! Hey I heard the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign, and consequently over the camera, because I completely missed. Right into the window of a parked car, leaving a cracked. Right into my desk, which looks relatively unscathed. Dude, run! I leap up, and we turn to the nearest alley. Wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I am no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. <sighs> Maybe we strike rock throwing for my to-do list. Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh, man. Starving. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Where's good around here? Uh, actually, I, I really don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm. I know just the place. Ed's Boom Boom Pizza. You ever heard of it? You can smoke weed out the front and nobody gives a shit. I follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole-in-the-wall pizza joint. The bright red neon sign reads, Pete's Pizza Pizza. Ta -da. I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get ready to order. Uh, can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Cameron, you cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Yeah. I we wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us a giant slice on a paper plate, so saturated with grease that I'm worried it'll fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. Oh, it's so delicious. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. Mm -hmm. You said it. So we bond over pineapple pizza and throwing rocks at things. I'm feeling way better now. Mm. You and me both. We hear a noise coming out of a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Mm -hmm. Got any more of that wild in ya? <laughs> it's something crawling. <laughs> um, uh, I, I love my daughter. You betcha! Who, who cares about loving my daughter? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Good on ya. Oh boy. Robert and I slide the door open and peek inside, and it's completely dark except for some flickering lights. Back to the scene of the crime we go, slowly creeping forward, cautious not to be heard, or even seen. Shh. Don't shush me so loud. Shh. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. This makes sense ever so suddenly. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and are surprised to find that it's almost completely empty. Save for a row of few teenagers in the front, they look annoyed when they notice us. Robert starts making his way to the very back of the theater and I follow him. We settle in with our wines and try to make sense of this movie. It's a romantic comedy, I think. A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman that he's finally realized he's in love with. Kiss already! There's nobody to kiss yet. Want him to kiss the taxi driver? Hell yeah. The kids down the way notice a heckling. One of them speaks up. Hey man, keep it down. Oh damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. Hugo's kid. Ernest! Hey! Hey Ernest! I know you! It's me! I'm your neighbor! Hi! Ernest turns back around embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. 
he kiss anyone yet? Turns out that, yes, he did in fact kiss someone. He made his way out to a tiny island near New York to profess his love for a woman who for some reason he knew would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had, but I think there was some subtext that I was missing there. Boo. Love is dead. Shut up. It's beautiful. No, you shut up, Ernest. Ernest grumbles. <clears throat> Credits start to roll. I stand up. Robert immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen, and you're going to sit there and appreciate them. Ooh. Okay. Look at that. Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good um, wardrobe design. Thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And, and Peter Anders catering that a bunch of people so that they could have the energy to do their jobs. <sighs> what a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks every member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film. We leave the movie theater. We stumble into the theater parking lot, polishing off the rest of our wine. Hey, assholes. Out of nowhere, a rock flies through the air and hits me on the knee. My knee! What the hell? Ernest and his friends stand in the alleyway, blocking our exit. Oh. What do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? Soon it'll be an arrow! It was my good knee! My orthopedist is gonna be pissed! Let alone my adventurer party! Ernest tosses another rock down in his hands. What's wrong with this kid? You ruined my theater-going experience. Now you gotta pay. Oh. Well, I don't have any cash on me right now when, like, movies get really expensive. Did you even pay for popcorn? Ernest hucks another rocket with my other knee. I'm able to jump out of the way, but I, I didn't properly stretch before physical activity, and I'm probably going to feel super sore in the morning. We ruined it for you? That movie was crappy in the first place. Hey, you take it back. There was a beautiful love story with really genuine acting. You call that good acting? What classicist mainstream slap have you been served your entire life? What? Uh -huh. Have you ever seen any Michael Powell, A Matter of Life and Death? 1946, easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. No, you listen, kid. That popcorn ass dribble, that mass media shoving down your throat will only make you duller and sadder. You all people should strive for a higher standard of the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sake. Uh -huh. Oh, no, you've done it! Ernest rushes at Robert, screaming like a banshee. I dive between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid, and he lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can on the knee. Fuck my knee! Robert gets in between Ernest and myself. It's as if he's seeing red. Fuck my fucking knee hurts. All right, buddy. Talk like punk. Get hit like a punk. Robert squares up into a boxer's stance. Queensberry rules. Three minute rounds with one minute rest in between. No low blows, fish hooks, I gra jay grabs, or high blows. What? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turnstile. That's an automatic deduction of three points. I... You'll have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie sucked. It's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensbury. We're just... We're just... We're just gonna go. Ernest and his friends warily back away. Robert calls after him. The Queensberry Association is going to hear about this one and consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of earshot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? Are you kidding me? I would never hurt a child. That would be despicable. I... You throw the rules at them, though. They always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensberry sanctions throw down. Oh. But full disclosure, <laughs> I made half that shit up. Wow. Oh. See, you don't even have to know the rules. Just make them up. Come on, let's get out of here. What? <laughs> Robin and I <laughs> cool down a bit as we walked out the neighborhood. That was wild. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> My goodness. All today's work, Chief. All of that. Gosh. That was so hype. I can't believe we didn't, like, whip out our dual discs or anything like that. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. 
I'm so sorry. I get really into the art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. Buddy, I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? Yugi? Yugi boy? Bot of greed? You ever deal with that shit? I, I can't say that I have. <sighs> Fuller is cash. Pot of greed is a card. Trap card, specifically. <laughs> Thanks for the adventure. Thanks for defending my dude, thanks for defending my honor. It's a little strange when you say it that way, but sure. Why not? Robert throws an arm around my shoulder. Consumption! Let's do some water. I literally have not sipped water this entire stream. Well, since the game began. We drunkenly belt out tunes on the way back. We finally get to his store step where he's screaming about a Millennium Eye or something. Oh this was a... <laughs> this is an interesting night. I liked it. A smile forms on his cheeks. A rare sight. Not a well done one. <laughs> Let's hang again soon. Yeah? Yeah. I linger there for a second. Swaying drunkenly in the night breeze. Robert claps me on the shoulder. Oh Night, bud. <laughs> Robert heads back inside. And I stumble my way home. That felt well. Can someone have voice modulation on my camera to modulate voices as he does these characters? That would be wild, kid. But only via redemptions. How many points is that, bro? 98 million. Let's go. So, actually, here's a moment. So, Robert is voiced by Daniel Avedon of the Game Grumps, and he literally just said, Wait, where'd my pants go? <laughs> Maximum energy-saving points! That's what that's what the thing says at the corner. It says energy-saving points. Welcome. <laughs> that was great. Oh, that was awesome! I love this guy! Robert? Shall we go for round two? Actually, I should check the messages. I never check the messages on here. What's going on over here? Do that thing with the vocal cords. What are we doing? I can't even talk to my daughter. Why can't I talk to my daughter? Craig says, hey, Dad, I got the runs. Oh, I got just the thing. I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, cherry liquors, and bigger word jumbles that I find helpful in stretch genuine scenarios such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? But I've got the runs. I meant that I feel like running. Ellipses with an extra period. <laughs> Wanna come to the gym? Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man, it'll be fun. You know what? Let's go to the gym. When are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this meat hill marathon. I'm inside right now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. I don't want to go running. I back out. I'm not dating Craig. <laughs> this isn't Mickey Mouse. What are you talking about? Well, I guess talking to these people is not good. Is this a group chat? <laughs> hey, are you up to anything tonight? He and I were planning to go to the art walk downtown where whatever you wanted to accompany to us. I would normally write a letter long hand, but I run out of distressed parchment paper. Vampire lad, what are you doing? Whoa, why can I see DB in Hugo's chat? I'm out of here. This is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Cameron's voice is gonna be whack from now on. At least until <laughs> until, we, until we get to the date. Let's talk to let's talk to him. <clears throat> let's talk to him. Let's go for it. I need another drink for this. <clears throat> with Robert the last time we hung out. And I'm getting to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times and dad book says he hasn't even read him. Haven't even seen him come out of this house, actually. I decided to send him one last message figuring that this will produce the same results. Hey, man. Didn't know where you've been, but you should grab a drink soon. I walk away from the computer because at this point I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon, so I'm just gonna go chill. Peace. I linger in the kitchen for a moment. I'm all caught up on my work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should just do something nice for Amanda. 
I'll bake her favorite pie. I root around the pantry and put all the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a while ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. Fuck it! I start mixing the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries in the saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. God damn it! I'm making a pie. Ah, uh, I really can't remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. Is it 375? Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. It's easy as pie. <laughs> get it? Get it? Anna, do you get it? No. <laughs> my, my special twist on my grandma's recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It's true love. Don't have any of that here. It really makes the cheese extra flavorful. <laughs> God, why can't I remember what the secret ingredients is? It's not love! Love is dead! Oh, it's more cherries, duh. <laughs> <coughs> What's the over-under? I have to go on vocal rest tomorrow. <laughs> God. All right. That was great. <laughs> Being the most important part of a cherry pie, I truly believe that you can never have enough cherries. Let's turn the cherry dial up to 11. Oops. All cherries. There's too much in there. Baking's an art. Some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. Amazing mistakes. Beautiful mistakes. I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? I'm gonna just wing it. Amanda's gonna be so excited. That kid loves a good pie. Baking is a science. Shut up! It is. Sorry, I... I want to take a moment to apologize to you, Annie. It seems that I've directed my energy in a very non-positive way in your direction. I am sorry. Here, let me, let me, no, no, where, where'd your comment go? It's over here. Here, I'll pat it, make it better. Apology accepted. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's the hormones, not Cameron. Kids, stop making up excuses. I hear the door slam open. Anna, can you slam the door for me? Yo, Pops! What smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Man, it darts over the oven and looks inside. <laughs> I thought it was the Aperol and Campari, lol. I haven't even gotten to all the drinks yet. There's three of them here. I've downed one already. <laughs> yes! Hey, it's not done. Be patient. What's your angle here? What? Pies are an objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? <laughs> uh... I've been leading a double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and aspiring astronaut and bank robber. The lifestyle is calling me back and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. The pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciated the years we spent together, but a uh, trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kicking your feet up in Ibiza? Yeah. Thanks for the pie. We share a cordial handshake. Oh. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack co to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Mm -hmm. Huh? What? Mm -hmm. Does it look kind of weird to you? Uh... That's just me taking artistic license on what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked the pie incorrectly and you're currently right now trying to pass it off as a good thing hmm. it's art sweetie was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake <laughs> well it's was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas well that's a bit of an exaggeration was it art when you just eat the pie panda huh. cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat Cherry filling oozes out of the sides, and the buttery crust glistens. 
I watch as Amanda takes a bite. Specifically, not containing bleach and or vinegar. Uh. Uh. What's wrong? Is it not good? Oh. Amanda winces and fans her mouth. No, no, no. I just burned the heck out of the roof of my mouth. The pie is amazing. Hi, Em. Welcome in. Sorry for doubting you. <laughs> I breathe a sigh of relief. And I take a bite. <coughs> She's right. Pie's pretty incredible. As it always is. And mighty temperature -y. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. I got a few dad tricks up my sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe fathers aren't as bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. And those channeling their fatherly energy. What? Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink and I pull myself out. <laughs> Pride will truly be my undoing. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Eh, this one spells... Cat. The rest of the evening trickles by and we consume some dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications and we both start getting ready for bed. I decide to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert. I hope he's okay. I turn out the lights, and I lie down. Hey, Cameron. Hey, 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 Cameron. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. What? What was that? Just on the verge of falling asleep. I have a weird dream like the last time. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the dinging. Lo, what's this? A booty call? Alrighty then. The computer screen looks at me. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice that there's a picture of something shaped like a my high school art project on the screen. Unless. Don't make me honk. I'll honk. Get out here. I look at my windows and sure enough, there is indeed a jar large six foot version of my high school art project, which just so happens to look a little phallic outside. And behind the sculpture is Robert's car. I open my door to try to figure out what's going on. Is this a flashbook? Hey. Hey? Oh. Wanna hang? I was kind of sleeping. Hmm. That's no fun. Huh. Come hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't even have to be anywhere in the morning, so I might as well just, like, live a little... Does Robert drive a phallic car? I thought it was a motorcycle. What is a motor vehicle? Sure. Huh. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize that I am absolutely butt-ass naked. Huh. I mean, I don't mind. Right! One second! <laughs> I run inside and throw on my going out pants. <laughs> Harley Dickinson. I grab my keys and then we wrap her outside. Mm. Fully pantalooned. Ready? Ready. Mm. Hop in. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette packets and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert is silently stopped. Ro <laughs> Robert silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. Hey. You like Tom Waits? I love, love Tom. Yo, hoist the rag, baby. I love. Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. He lights a cigarette and cracks the windows. We drive together in silence. Don't ever settle for less. Red truck calling a Christmas tree? Cyber truck. That's not cool, man. Weed is cool. Cyber trucks aren't cool. So, <laughs> where are we going? Actually, I'm going to use this orange garnish as a cigarette. Where are we going? Robert doesn't respond. Robert? Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's taking us to the highway. And I... 
twiddle my thumbs while holding my cigarette. Well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in it for the night. I settle in my seat and watch the streetlights pass by. This is low-key kidnapping. Shh! I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does. But is there something a little bit more that I just can't quite place? <sighs> you too, kid. Stay safe out there. I say nothing. Because silence is king, baby. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decided to keep my mouth shut as I wait for the Netflix true crime conclusion. He notices me staring. Mm. Stop looking so nervous. I'm not nervous. <laughs> You're nervous. I am a little nervous. Oh. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I don't know. Who gives a shit? I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not really sure anymore. <sighs> we eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car and I sit for a second unsure if he wants me to get out too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance to a dense forest. Man, this is gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. What? Uh, I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? Hey. This is my little spot where I come to think. <laughs> Robert is not Dahmer, it's just Louis C.K. <laughs> it's nice. Uh -huh. You can see the whole city from up here. Really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind him and pulls out something from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight and I suddenly realize what it is. It's a knife! Oh shit! That's a knife! Oh, please don't stab me. Uh. Robert reaches into his pocket. He pulls out a small piece of wood, which looks oddly like the six foot tall version of my high school wood arch project, but only, only three inches, huh? Please don't stab me with it. I... Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. Oh? Oh? <laughs> I breathe this very audible sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? <laughs> what? No, 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 of course not. Mm. Hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Yeah, well... You think you caught me in your trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk food in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, friend, and reap what you will. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, huh? Oh. Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a folding knife that he opens and hands to me. Hmm. I'm gonna warn you. The last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers. Because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You're familiar, correct? I... I, I honestly can't tell when you're kidding. Mm -hmm. I am so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. Ah. <laughs> I, that's, that's good. That's good. I like that. Huh. Have you ever whittled before? Considering I'm not a grandpa... <clears throat> no. Mm. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Cameron, I'll have you know that whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike, that you're dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. Uh -huh. However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of us as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to ignorance instead of malice. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is, go get the stick. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the ground. Perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Huh. The 
most important thing to remember while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. This dude is so serious about the art. I love it. Dude, seriously, though. Isn't that the most important thing? Safety? Hey. Oh? No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. I look at his damn hands. They're calloused, covered with little white scars. They are very nice hands. Huh. Can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. Knife that wood. Oh, I'm knifing wood. Uh. Uh. I pull out the knife. I cut with the grain. Oh, I see. I cut with the grain. Ooh. That's a good start. What is it? It's a sharp stick. Careful. Don't poke yourself with that. I made a sharp stick. I have sharp sticks. These are relatively sharp. They're little skewers. Oh, hello. We're doing it again. Um, I'm gonna do... Should I make another? <gasps> Ooh! It's a popsicle! Tell me about this one. It's a flatworm! Gross. I made a flatworm! <laughs> I love this. The random 3D minigame is insane. How did this even happen? How did they have the processing resources for this? Oh! What's the story here? It's my penis. Something to make me look tougher? It's working. I think you could take me in a fight. Probably. Ah! Tough guy accessory! It's a toothpick! I got those too! <sighs> I want to make something cool and phallic looking. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Chin chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. <laughs> it does not look like a chicken nugget at all. What is, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is what is? N nice form. W what's it supposed to be? <laughs> it's Louisiana. Good old Louisiana. Beautiful place. Got stabbed there once, you know. Or was it Kentucky? I made Louisiana! The Nixon aesthetics is so jarring. Like, why is it all so low poly? <laughs> I don't even care. I just made Louisiana! I wanna make Colorado next. It's my favorite state, Colorado. Never been, though. That's it. Interesting. What do you have here? Chopstick? Righty? Lefty? This is my ambidextrous chopstick. It's a stick. Chopstick! Let's do another. How many more are we doing? Is the knight getting to... Oh, it's a big piece of wood. Take a lot for this one. I'm going to say this one's him. If you keep this up, you'll be a whittling pro in no time. It looks like a swan, but it's got a little diamond around its neck. Swan duck, new friend. I love this guy. I'm gonna name this friend. Friend. He's beautiful. I'm happy for you. This friend friend. I'm gonna do a bigger one. This is actually quite nice. This is beautiful. Oh my. Oh oh my. That's a lot of poly. Wow, that's a that's a lot of poly. Beautiful handiwork. What do you call it? Yeah, I thought there were just sticks around here. The Spirit of the Mustang? Sir Horsington the Brave? Sir Horsington the Brave! Oh, dude. A brave and noble name for a brave and noble creature. Beautiful gift for Amanda. <gasps> Aww! That's my daughter! I can't stand those hard images. Oh my gee, why didn't they smooth them? 
then it wouldn't be Sir Horsington the Brave. They'd be Sir Horsington the Smooth. Rabbit and I sit in silence for a little while, carving our pieces of wood, and I think I'm getting the hang of this. It's actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on, and he's carving a smaller wooden knife. Ugh! While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Oh man, good blush! Good gush is all over my little wood carving! Um... Robert is lost in carving and doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Uh... Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. This isn't vampire. Otherwise, he'd be having a feast. Robert finally looks over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much does this stuff... How much, Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a red bandana. And he wraps it around my thumb. A little tight. He hops off in the truck and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. And he comes back in a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit. Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and swipes a bit of the antiseptic into the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. Mm. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube antiseptic. Uh -huh. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching. And... Just the slightest bit sexy? I guess I'm a real whittler now. Uh. There you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. They? Wait. What? What's, what's attracted to that smell of blood? Huh. Cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Uh. Mothman is bullshit. But yeah, this town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. You're joking. Mm. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself. Or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. I think about my entire time in this city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Oh. Well, let me tell you a story. Hey. I was out in the woods here, a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You, you don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup. Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants all good stuff. Mm -hmm. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hide deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip tonight. So, me and Betsy start marching in the morning. Uh -huh. It gets a little late. We set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels. I can't hear any of them. Dead. Silent. Uh -huh. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. Right outside my tent, me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. Uh -huh. But there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something, is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. Mm. A man, but... If something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong. Big arms, too long for its body, black eyes that just stood there, stared at me. <sighs> then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy, and I turn around to check on her, but she's gone, in a thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night, and I don't think I've slept right since. Hi, Willpower. That's terrifying. Wow, Robert. Oh. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. Oh! <laughs> howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away. Something about it just makes my skin crawl. Uh -huh. Okay, Robert. Real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. You're messing with me. Right? Uh -huh. I was messing with you. Up until, uh, literally, just now. I, I totally made that campy story up. I strained my eyes to scan the forest, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away. I can barely make out a shape. It looks human, but it's d dragging something. Um, do you see that? Uh -huh. We should... go. Really? 
Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights and we make a slow crawl away back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? Really? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously. <laughs> this time he doesn't seem like he's it doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on the wildlife preserve? Mm. Yeah. That's the story we'll tell ourselves. We sit in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Oh. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Mm. I'm sorry, I haven't been in touch. Just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Uh -huh. Had to be around somebody. Oh, buddy. Doing okay, man? Oh. Robert thinks for a second, and he lights another cigarette. Hmm. Oh. Been doing a lot of thinking. A long drag of his cigarette. A long sip of my drink. Time for the third one. Uh -huh. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in this sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Oh. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Mm. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say... I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them, but there was always a light at the end of the tunnel, like something I held on to that just kind of kept me going. Hey. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Dover Ghost, try to lighten the air a little bit. Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover Ghost. Maybe that's why it's here. The Dover Ghost feeds off of your sadness. My sadness? It hunts us in the night. Mm. Honestly, it makes sense. I was... I was trying to kid around. Mm. To just be devoured for my sins. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sounds pretty great. Actually. It was... a joke. Mm. I'm turning the car around. We're going back. How dare you. Robert slams on the brakes and puts the car in reverse. Robert, wait. He stops the car again. You know what? I thought about it. It's not my time yet. I haven't finished watching the Criterion Collection. They just keep adding stuff to it. But, thanks. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. I think we said something right. Robert drops me off at my place as I'm about to close the passenger door and I realize I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and I offer it back to him. Huh. You won't remember that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks. Then he pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is exactly one over from mine. He gets out and he waves. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda up. Whoa, where'd you come from? Mm. I look around and I spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Mm. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. Yeah. You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? Amanda, la- You know what? It's fine, because eh? it's true. I finally decided to go to bed. I think that went well. That felt good. I made a little popsicle stick. I made a, a, a gift for Amanda. I made a toothpick. Blood. Oh, blood is at an absolute, massive, uh, absolute maximum. Rank ass. Got him. Very good. 
I'm gonna fill up on um, water real quick because I realized that it's been all cocktail, no agua. I'm on to the last side by side this evening. Honestly, date number three, drink number three. That actually makes sense. This is the Campari one. It's been had a chance to sit for a little while. I actually mellowed out the um, it mellowed out a lot. Actually, that's definitely not the Campari one because it's not bitter in the least bit. I think that's the My Spritz. That's not too bad. It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh. So I decided to take that long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights of the sounds of the suburban city with a low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's a lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this one outside. Inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. Mm. I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary sitting alone in the corner, nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass to me. We're staring off into the middle distance. I'll say hi. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. Is she taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyways, and she finally notices me. Oh. Hey, cowboy. You all right? Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Ah. Tears start welling up in her eyes. Oh. Ah. Uh. Will, will you walk a gal home? Um. I'll call her a cab. I came here for... I, I'm all dead set on Robert if he comes out here. Oops. Sorry, microphone. Sorry, everybody. I have sympathy for Mary, but it's hard to muster the energy to give her any more of my time tonight. Also, it's raining outside. But hey, money can solve this problem. You trust a cab driver? I'd call an Uber for someone too, and I feel like that's even more a precarious situation, come to think of it. How would I call you a cab, Mary? Does she agree to it? That's the question. Ah. Whatever you say, cowboy. It takes me a while to figure out how to call a cab from my phone without a man's help, but soon enough, one is indeed on the way. Mary leans against the doorframe, forlorn, while waiting for the cab to arrive. I try to make some small talk, but I can't really think of anything to say. Eventually, I drift back to the TV corner. And I soak up a bit more of the game. Hmm. It's not too much longer before I notice Mary starting to leave. We give each other a nod. She walks out the door. Welcome. You've got dads. I'm sure she's fine. I'm sure she's just fine. Robert! Buddy! I'll save. It's time to get spicy. I'm ready to see what Robert's really all about. And it's definitely not regarding Mary, for sure. Look at that beautiful face of yours. The cocktail angle gets in the way. I think I gotta move that thing around. I don't know where to put it. That's a problem for a future Cameron. One who's not at least a drink or two into a stream. Hey, hey, hey. They say about third date's pretty serious. Yeah, let's do it. Save and continue. Let's go for it. Let's do the thing where we fall in love with a man in a video game. I haven't spoken to Robert since that night. We drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually sober then. Like... More so than the usual amount of so somber, somber than what Robert is, which is already quite a bit. I've been thinking about him and hope he's doing okay, but I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him. Cameron, hey, hey, Cameron, guess, guess who's getting their drink on tonight? Oh, it's Robert. Look at that. Guess it's you. 
Oh, also me. <laughs> but mostly you. Right now? Yeah, dude. Right now? Yeah, dude. I type back to Robert. Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. <laughs> nice. Yes. Meet me at Jimmy Kim's. 8, 8 p.m. 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Not that I'm not appreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. That's progress, baby. Amanda! Amanda pops her head into the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from her room. What's up? I'm hanging out with Robert later tonight. Okay, cool. Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. I'm happy for you, Dad. People enjoy my company. Amanda. Ugh. Dad, I'm so happy for your continued development as a human being. What are you listening to? Sad shit. Amanda, language. What would Grandma think? I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> I don't give a fuck anymore. Amanda, Lang. Mm. You know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years of your life. Go forth and swear. Hmm. Fuck yeah! I really hope I don't regret this later. I got an achievement for that. Amanda goes back into her room and turns up the volume to her sad shit. I put on my going out coat and walk over to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against the brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize that he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. Did you decide to shave? I didn't. I'm trying to get closer to you. It actually seemed like he's combed his hair. Oh yeah, that. And his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Is he gussy up tonight? Hey. Hey. You take a shower just for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. We both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes his cigarette and abruptly goes inside. I follow him. By the time I get inside, Robert's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in, hands me a glass. To us? To toast? To you? To you for what? That's the question. To us? That's weird. To toast? Oh. A toast to toast. Love you, warm bread. We clink whiskeys, and I watch him sip his rather than his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quickly as possible. So what's the plan for the night? Hit some other bars. Maybe grab some pizza. I think that'll kill some time before we go burn down that old abandoned house in the woods. It's definitely not as fun as if it's abandoned. Huh? Mary pops over the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. Where is my phone call? Hey. Sorry. I figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. I am. He's right here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her. He waves, meekly. Come on. You replacing me with a new kid? Mary, I could never replace you, whether I wanted to or not. Mary leaves her booth and slides in next to Robert. The guy she was sitting with looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean pressed clothes up and down suspiciously. What, you got a court date coming up? He does, he looks handsome. He'd never convince the jury. I think he looks handsome. I think he cleans up nicely. What? That was not the right decision. Pump the brakes, kid. I blush a little. Uh. Seriously, though. What's up with you? Robert stares down at his drink, suddenly looking serious. Uh. It's... Happy. Doctors say it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with the sauce. It's all he's ever known. Especially since ma has gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. Just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Uh... Cameron, don't be an asshole. You know, the one thing Robert doesn't joke about is his pappy. Whoops. They're giving him two months. I gotta help him straighten out his affairs. Robert. I'm so sorry. Robert takes a long sip at his whiskey, eyeing it in the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, and then I look at mine. I know history is just doomed to repeat itself. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's retired with his new girlfriend in Acapulco. They watch the sunset every night, probably screw like donkeys. I, wait, wait, aren't rabbits the ones that screw a lot? 
Oh, sorry. Didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. <laughs> Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drinks and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Cameron are gonna hit the bricks. Coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sap that she's been hunting down and downs the rest of her wine in one gulp. Uh. This place is dead anyways. Uh. Off we go! We exit the bar and find the typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. What's going on? Looks like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that as part of the town all the time. I've always wanted to do one of those. Mm. You know, all the stories are fake, right? Huh. Pretty much all of my stories are fake. This is a research. Uh? Robert makes a beeline toward the back of the group. He turns around when he notices that I'm not following him. Come on. We can't just crash it. Can we? Mm. Don't be such a square, Cameron. Just act like you belong. Robert slides up to the tour group, and I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. Hey, hey, it was the place in 1694 that's the most infamous which trials were held. To date, we don't know if the people burned at the stake were actually witches, but it's wildly reported that there's ghosts still haunt this hapless vibe bar to this very day. Mm -hmm. It was actually 1692. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you? Daniel McSturgis. Ghost historian. And this is my colleague, Dr. <laughs> 90s reference? 80s reference? Contemporary reference? Uh, I don't know what the right answer is here. Uh, 80s? Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator extraordinaire. We're touring America's most haunted locations as research for our new book. Uh -huh. You may have seen our guest cameo in Paranormal House Hunters, Extreme Edition. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert's really good at this. Uh... Are you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at the first stop. You like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Hey. They've definitely been there. Standing next to them the whole time. Thank you, random lady who I do not know. Ah. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the Coffee Spoon over there. The man who runs it has been plagued by haunting since he signed the lease. At least damn near driven him mad. Mm. But whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Hey. Excuse me. Man didn't even know that about Matt. Wait, wait, Robert's making this up. <laughs> the rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every single word. I think the tour guide can tell he's losing the group. He seems to be getting kind of flustered. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution and knowledge, Mr... McSturgis. Uh, let's move on to the next haunted location. Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. That tour guide's shirt is cool. Yeah, everyone in the group gets one if you make it to the final location. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that shirt. Mm. Well, guess we're in this for the long haul then. Just follow my lead. Don't arouse too much suspicion. And we'll have cool ghost shirts in no time. Oh. Our group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. <laughs> a quick pause in the tour. My name is Quinn, but most people on the ghost tour circuit call me Tour Master Quinn. I'm a DJ, trivia master, and part-time actor. Right. I do private ghost tour next events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, and perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. Master Quinn gives out headshots of all to all of us. His resume is conveniently on the back. Hmm. Stage combat experience. <laughs> anyway, here's a little bit of history for you all. This was the home of a noted American author, Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics as The Diaries of a Victorian Mistress, Lady Fitzwilliam's Courtship, and The Ghosts of Sea Captain Reginald Barclay. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people had reported that on some nights you could see a light from the attic where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues to work on her latest bestseller. I guess you should say that she was... No reaction from the crowd. This guy really needs to work on his dad jokes. 
Actually, consumption is a, the popular cover-up. Little known fact is that it was a murder-suicide. <laughs> consumption? <laughs> I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. That's tuberculosis, to my knowledge. Mm. Sure, sure. And we definitely didn't hire Stan Cooper, Stanley Kubrick to elaborate fake the moon, to elaborately fake the moonlighting. That's the watered down, censored version they teach you in school. But if you can't handle a real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Can we? I think everyone should much rather hear about this world-renowned ghost historian as to say, "Am I right, everyone?" The group murmurs in agreement. This is a topic we cover extensively in our book, Doctor Loomis. Would you care to tell the story? Uh, give us something to note. Rely on amazingly, my amazingly improv comedy skills. That is what I am all about, dude. I try to remember something, anything from the improvisational comedy class that I took that one semester in college. I actually took three of them. Uh, yes. So Dorothy Pembridge, Dorothy Pembridge was writing a lot of books. Yes, and I'm gonna need a word from the audience. Any word, any word. Ghost? Yes. And ghost, ghost, and I look over to Robert, and I think this is the part where he's supposed to come tap me on the shoulder and jump into the scene, but he's just staring at me. Everyone is staring at me. Uh, and scene. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh. I fucked that up pretty bad. Robert looks completely disgusted. Mary gives me a thumbs down. But I think I've gotten good with the tour master Quinn. I mean, so there's that. Uh, the tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and addresses us with some razzle-dazzle. <laughs> what an interesting story. Uh, now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can't handle it, feel free to excuse themselves. Super scary. All right, I'm bored. Mary turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey, kid. Fancy buying a gala drink? The guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. I, I think I could exercise your demons. That's what you're looking for. Go write checks your dick can't cash, kid. I heard her say it in the background, too. <laughs> His eyes go wide. Mary salutes to me and Robert. <laughs> she suddenly pulls me into a hug and murmurs into my ear. And you know Robert for as long as I have. You know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him for me tonight, okay? Sure, Mary. Good man. Mary pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street. Ah. Take it, sleazy fellas. God help that poor soul. Mary or the kid? Huh. Both. I... A last stop! This burial ground is such a hotbed for horrifying paranormal activity that I'm not even sure where to begin. There's the wailing ghost of the wharfman, the vampire of Maple Bay, the children of the moonlight. What about the Dover ghost? By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. What about it? Oh, nothing. I just didn't think it would be a crime to come all the way out to the cemetery with the actual origin of one of New England's most notorious paranormal entities, and not even mention the infamous Dover Ghost. That's not a real thing. That's absolutely not a real thing. I think somebody needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. I can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me, and he smiles. Mm. Would you folks care to hear this tale of how Loomis and I met? Hey! No! The entire group shushes the tour guide. Shh. I am sad. Okay. Fine. Tell the story. Well, it was a dark and stormy night. I wasn't always a paranormal investigator. Way back when, I was just a traveling grifter. Moving from town to town. Always looking for my next mark. It wasn't an easy life. It had fun. Taken from the rich. Given to the poor. Actually, also taking from the poor. I had a shaky moral foundation. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know that this city has a dark side. 
Now, about the same time, I was starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried the equipment, operated the EVP machine, all that. Wait! Uh. Yes? Oh, always the famous ghost hunter? Hey. Well, I don't like the name drop, but Georgia Mathers. The tour guard gasps! Hey. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend! You know her? Uh. Knew her. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Miss you, Georgie. Hey. Anyway, we were in the Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgia was never one to shy away from an adventure. We camped down in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so called Wailing Watchman. Wailing Ghost of the Wharfman? Mm. Whatever. Your stupid vampire was just a teenager in a mask, but the Dover Ghost Man. Tell him, Lomas. Hey. So there I was, just walking back to my hotel after a long day of working a couple short cons. Classic pigeon drop scam. Putting out feelers for a rip deal. I was gonna steal a baby. Uh, probably. Would've made me rich. I found myself walking past this very cemetery. Now, I was never a very superstitious man, but something seemed off. I could hear some sort of commotion happening deep within the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. Mm. And thank God you did. George and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal, but after about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Huh? Run. Hey. The air suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We started to hear this faint, distant, scraping noise, like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder, louder, until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. Mm. And then I felt it. Someone. Something. Grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd on the hook. Line and sinker, you can hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. The other was when that thing started dragging me. I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew, knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran into the mausoleum just in time to see a man being pulled across the floor by... God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into nuts. Looked like a man, but like, glance at Robert, like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. The arms were too long, the eye is glowing red, it was like a walking shadow. What I do? What any good person would do. I lunged for, shoot, what was his fake name again? Uh, McSturgis? Mixter, Stur, David? Davis? Daniel? 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 Daniel! I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the unholiest of forces. I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had the God on my side. The pocket Bible I always kept on me fell out of my shirt pocket, and to this day, I can remember what passage it opened up to. Levit- What the- uh, it's, uh, to, uh, 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 Leviticus, Revelations, Ecclesiastes, Austin. Austin 316. <laughs> Robert stifles a laugh behind his hand. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed onto the ground, exhausted. We were both covered in blood. That damn creature clawed onto my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his chest. And that's how I got the scar. I followed Georgia Mathers to the end of the earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room. But I had never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that, and neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith, but I came out of that experience a better man, a better friend. And we've been brothers ever since. The tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel, er, Robert, and I... Share an emotional hug. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne on his neck. Ooh. Robert, Robert really does clean up good. 
I find myself lingering a little too long on the hug. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be able to share our story. Be sure to watch out for our book. Paranormal Excursions of the Supernatural Ice Road Ghost Truckers. I saw a demon. The shocking true story of seeing a demon. The bro's guide to the hottest ghosts. I saw a, 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 demons. Demons. <laughs> Robert has to suppress a left on that one. All right. Even I can see the holes in this story. Please leave. Mm. Way to go, Cameron. Robert soaks away from the tour group, and I follow him at a respectable distance. Oh, we almost had him. Mm. Almost. Mm. I think you might have overdone it in some points, uh, portions of the story. Hey. Yeah. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Oh. Well, see you later. Robert hastily walks up the steps to his home after giving me a courtesy nod. He disappears into the house without looking back. Ooh. I didn't do good. I did not do very good there, apparently. Let's see. Ooh. A lot of fun, though. Ooh. I went on all the Robert dish, but I didn't get the ending. I didn't do the good ending. I've never read Rich Dad Poor Dad, Dad tip number 54. That's rough, dude. That's rough. I, I laid it way too heavily on my own particular personality. I think I have everything finally set up. Oh, this is the part where... Oh, okay, so we all go back to the thing, right? Gotta act natural. Think the car's in the driveway. This is the part, right? Is it a good start? Something fishy? Rats. What? No. Oh, I wonder I wonder if this is different than the last one. What? No! No! I, uh, I, I had a crab cake sandwich for lunch. That's probably it. You're allergic to shellfish. Oh. Oh no, I forgot again. Dad, oh gosh, I'm gonna be sick. What have I done? I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where I pre a present lies under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to give you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me to not make a big deal about it, but... Not dad, you! I dramatically whipped the cloth off the table! Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. DVD box set of long home paranormal that this is this is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. I think we've been through this already. Dad, I love this. Thank you. Gives me a big old hug. Glad you like it. Hey, you wanna hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally! And then we go out to the back where all the dudes are. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's here. Oh, but I didn't get the good ending for Robert. Nah, man. I told him not to make a big deal. I'm gonna, you know what? We got, we got time. We're at the, what is it, two hour mark? I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna go through and make the correct decisions this time. The correct decisions, or at least try my best. That's de that's difficult. That's difficult. Let's go for it. I'm gonna go back. Go back to, uh, Robert Date 3. Oh, there's a lot of auto-saving. Wow, okay. Well, I was screwing this over from the very beginning, so... I was not surprised about that. Welcome. You've got that. I just want to see that beautiful... Every, it's just like, Brian had a really nice picture. I'll see if I can get the picture there, too. And I don't know, if I, if I don't complete it, do I get to see the colored picture of them in the, on the beginning screen? I got time for it. Let's go for it. Things are very serious. So I think... Robert is a very, very somber. We, we heard that it was a, he's a somber kind of guy, right? That's what it's all about. Is there a way to like, oh, I can just speed through this, right? Oh, I just clicked this button. Huh, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. We speed, speed all the way through. Try to get the good stuff. Uh, I don't give a fuck. Now go for it. Go for it, dude. Get on in to us because of celebration, right? It's a celebration for us, for the, the two of us, right? Because you invited me out, right? Here's to us, and all the property damage and petty larceny that we may commit tonight. Clink whiskeys and watch him sip his, rather than his uh, traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back. He sips it, because there's something wrong, right? What's the plan? We go do stuff, paranormal stuff, you know? He does, he does not look handsome. He'd never convince the jury. He would have had to shave first. Ooh, what is up with you, dude? 
He doesn't like to be directly complimented. Perhaps he's a little insecure about it. It was the 80s reference. Love that. Loomis. Not that I know what the Loomis reference is. I was born in the 90s. Good stuff. Riff on something highbrow? Go with it. My improv comedy skills were absolute dog shit. So I guess we just riff on something highbrow? I, I don't know. It's gotta be better than the comedy skills. <laughs> ah, yes, though it's rather rarely covered in traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pembridge was caught in a fierce rivalry with fellow local author Arthur Livingston Price. Arthur's books were blatant ripoffs of Pembridge's work and consistently sold better. Pembridge was enraged by this and confronted Livingston Price at his home with plans to end his life. Their bitter feud surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate affair. After many, many months of secret courtship, Pembridge followed through with his original plan and poisoned Livingston Price in his sleep. Overcome with unexpected grief, Pembridge polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Reporters say that couples who enter this house will no doubt doom their relationship to a bitter end. Man, I should bring my wife here. The entire tour guard laughs. I'm kidding. My wife's dead. The crowd gasps. She was killed by a ghost. <laughs> the crowd gasps again. I'm just messing with you guys. A nervous chuckle rips throughout the crowd. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and address us with some razzle-dazzle. You'd think that afterwards Robert would be like, Or am I? Bye-bye, oh, hmm. kid. All over again, there we go to the theater. Bible saves it. I'm a grifter, bro. The grifter just like last time. That worked so well the first time. I work a couple of short cons because I'm a bad boy, just like Robert is. We can relate, really. Daniel! His name is Daniel! I remember the name! Austin is hilarious! It's so funny! I laugh. He kind of likes it. I saw a demon in Shocking Story. That one was okay. Uh, I'm gonna save this one because I don't even know which one's correct. The bros guy to the hottest ghost? That doesn't seem very... Robert. Is it? Ice Road Ghost Truckers, he hasn't even read it. Bros guy. Oh, he likes it. He likes it. He likes it, that one. That's good. That's good. And we sulk away. You almost had him. Almost. I think you might have overdone it in some portion of the story. Does it have to be perfect? Oh, yeah. You're friend of Robert's house. See you later. No way, bro. Oh. He goes back in. Did I not do very... What was the thing? Does it have to be perfect? Ooh. B. B. All right. Okay. 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 Maybe this is the tough one. Tough one with Robert. I'm going a, I'm to a do it again. I really want to do good here. I want to do really... We're going to take it very, very carefully this time. Extremely carefully. Extremely carefully. Go to the beginning. Go to the beginning. Before we have the shot. Put my going out code to the spot. Robert, there he is. And then we go in, and this time it's to you. Specifically. To you. Here's to your continued existence. And he likes that one. Attempt number three. This will be the one. So what's the plan for tonight? Hit some of the other bars, maybe grab some pizza, kill some time in the woods, you know, all that stuff. Mary pops on over, and she says, hi. I say that he never convinced the jury, but he likes that. But if I say he does, he does. Just a subtle acknowledgement. He does. Courts offered me impunity if I would testify against him. I'm considering it. Mm. Seriously, though, what's up with you? He stares down at his drink. There's something about Pappy. Pappy's doctor. But he's in Acapulco. It's fine. It's fine. Then we go over here. Contemporary reference? Like, the 80s reference was darn good, right? He loves it. He loves it, he loves it, he loves it. And we continue along with... Stuff. The consumption. Something that I know. What do I know? 19th century, Dorothy Pembridge was credited for protecting New York City from the potentially world-ending paranormal forces. Despite her success, her ragtag group of ghost hunters were disbanded by government officials. However, after learning that the ghost of Vigo the Carpathian has taken an interest in her son, her and her ghost... Busting friends launched a mission to defeat the ghost and once again save New York City. Uh? <laughs> hey, isn't that the plot to... Nope, it's not. And he loves it. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and addresses it with the razzle-dazzle, same as before. Robert likes this one. And then Mary goes along and taps a poor fella. A poor sap. What about it? We go over here, we say that. I'm a traveling grifter. He really likes the traveling grifter thing. We go along and I like to do a shuffle of short cons. We like that. He likes that. Oh, actually, the couple of short cons was not exactly that good. We go back a second. Go back here. Go back here. Go back here. 
The short cons was not really the one. Oh, good night, love. As I try to con this man into loving me. Dover Ghost. Dover Ghost, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. A traveling grifter. He loves that stuff. I don't, I don't want to lay it on too thick. Not too thick, not too thick. Running the dunk take? Selling Bibles. I mean, I did say that I have my Bible later on in the story. Saving souls and selling Bibles. Also saving a couple Bibles. But never selling any souls. Except my own. But that's another story. I lean over to Tour Master Quinn. I want it back in a fiddle competition. I found myself walking past this very cemetery. Now I was never very superstitious. Man, something seemed off. I could hear sort of a thing. Oh, thank God you did. George and I were connected to a seance. Was that... I didn't get any reaction there. No reaction whatsoever. Interesting. How could it be? How could it be? How could it be? How could it be? So I am a grifter. And... I run a dunk tank. That's chill. Worked my way up from the ticket tanker, the dunk tank mech technician. I sat on the stand for towers on end. It was rigged. Anyway, after a long day of selling myself horse, I found myself walking past the cemetery. And that's not very good either. Okay. So it seems... Now that one's just, you can only do love. Oh. Burial ground. All right. Got the love, the grifter. We love the grifter. And we also love the short cons. It's just the heart, but it's a good heart. It's a good heart. Something feels weird. Daniel. He loves it. Revelations, Austin. Maybe I don't lay it on too thick, right? Maybe I save here. Leviticus? And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour un... Oh, this is, this is Robert. And if thy oblation be a meat offering, bacon in the pan, it shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mingled with oil. Not exactly re relevant, but true. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. The horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Interesting. Does he actually know the Bible? Is he a pious man? Got the, got the pocket Bible. Revelations. Blessed is he that writeth, readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I have no idea where he pulled that verse from. But the horrifying ground. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. Do any of them do better? Do any of them do better? Is the Bible verse even the right way to go about it? Ecclesiastes? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I have no idea where he pulled that from. All right. Oh, he likes it. He liked that one. Well, because he thinks about death, and to death he goes, and dust and otherwise. That's rough. Robert, bro. I saw a demon. The bro's hottest guy to ghost, you know? Like, does he like the Ice Road Truckers one? That feels, that feels out of character. <laughs> he totally does! That fell out of character. We've never even talked about Ice Road Paranormals, Ghost Truckers, or whatever. Well, I... <laughs> well, oh, okay. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. The tour guide hands us the coveted t-shirts. He then slips us both his business card and leans in close. Hey. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, balloon animal artist, Elvis impersonator, or nude model, please, don't hesitate to contact me. So, you got it, buddy. That went in all the different directions that I thought it was going to go. After a couple of tourists take selfies with us, we split away from the group and we walk home. That was incredible! After like the fourth or fifth try, you know? <laughs> I really can't believe they bought all that. I didn't know you had it in you, Cameron. Excuse me, Dr. Loomis. Mm. That bit about the pocket Bible was aces. Although, given the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Kubrick conspiracy theory bit, was it? All a part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Mm. Wanna have a drink? Is that even a question? You're trying to poison me? Yeah, is that even a question? Come on, let's go. Robert, how long have you known me for? Do you really think that I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend and accomplice, Mr. Robert? Bobbert? Small? Mm. If you ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins. Both of them. Oh. Then you can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist in the morning. Oh. Bobbert. <laughs> <laughs> Robert just laughs and starts unlocking his door. My shins live to die another day. There. Oh, look, it's his place. Oh, and a fine liquor collection. I see a bottle of blue coat, maybe. Robert leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. 
Robert did seem a little bit off. But that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh god! It's his pitfall! I'm about to be torn to shreds! I shut my eyes tight and I brace for impact! Betsy, hey, hey. Be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws scratching at my shoes. Open my eyes! Betsy? Mm. Robert's dog jumps away from me, running around in circles and sniffing Robert's legs, which we can't see because his face is on the other side. He pats her on the head. Hey, that's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terrier I've ever seen. Betsy, you're... not a pit bull. And you weren't taken by the Dover ghost. Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over some, for some well-deserved belly rubs. I just keep a picture of a large pitfall in my wallet in case of emergencies. You know, comedic emergencies. We make our way to Robert's living room for a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup that can, pickup truck that can be legally driven. His place is amazing. There are sleek, modern appliances throughout the room with a big flat screen TV mounted on the wall. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. I guess he really wasn't lying about being into cinema. He pours us both glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. And you know what? Robert, my friend. Let's let's pour let's let's pour one for Robert cuz I'm out of I'm out of my boulevardiers. I'm into this. Big old cube for our buddy Robert. Nice and cold. With a little bit of the bar with an X's proprietary blend of bourbon and or whiskeys. What exactly is in it? We have no idea, but because we take from the infinity bar bourbon bottle, we pour it back up with... We were at an Irish bar. We ran out of an Irish pub. Let's fill it up with a little bit of Irish whiskey. We'll see if impro we've improved upon this since last stream. All right, Robert. Shall we, my friend? Betsy curls up into a nice pile of cushions. So, how did you really get that scar? And don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You've trained me too well. <laughs>, <laughs> Brian laughs and he takes... Uh, Robert laughs and he takes a sip of his drink. Excuse me, I'm projecting. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and then we went to the hospital. That's it. Hey. Not a very interesting story. I've never heard you talk about your daughter. Well, I have one. Brand is very... Still not very sweet. A little bit of a spice heavy? A little, little bit of spice now. I can really tell. Honestly, tastes a little bit of the smoke in there a little bit better now. It's balanced. A little balanced now. Uh -huh. That's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep. That's definitely Robert's daughter. How old is she? Uh, 25? 26? Um, I'm not too sure. Does she live around here? Huh? No. Val lives back home in Brooklyn. Works in some new media online magazine thing. Makes buckets, though. I don't know. He suddenly seems really serious. Probably shouldn't press him about I... it. You like Santana? Oh, dude, Santana's the one that does... Oh, I think Santana does that. Smooth, I think it's called, right? It's Smooth by Santana. I do, like, unironically, I do love Santana. So. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Excellent. Robert puts on some Santana, takes a seat on the couch next to me. Takes his drink and takes it down in one gulp. I'm not doing that. Hey. Are you alright? Oh. Ooh. Robert leans in and kisses me. Oh my god, the taste of whiskey burned in my lips. I'm surprised at first. But I slowly relax in his arms. He pulls away slightly. His lips... 
barely brushing against my mouth. Dude, this is where it gets sexual, dude. I am now. I can't say anything. At best, managing a sigh. Robert leans in again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his teeth and bites lightly, sliding a hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both down on the couch. He kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin ever so slightly. I... I just... Oh, wait, wait. It's not that. Robert bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Oh, my God. Stop! Robert stiffens up and pulls away. No biting. No, no. I'm, I'm more than okay with that. Actually, quite a kinky fellow. I... Something's up. Robert runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. Just been kind of stressed out. Tired. Not a big deal. I'm gonna push it. No, 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 no. That ain't, that ain't it. Listen. Listen. I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. I need to make sure that you're okay. Robert stares at the ground. Mm. You don't know me that well, Cameron. I'm not... I, I'm, I'm not a good person. He takes a deep breath. Mm. I spend my whole life only taking and taking and taking. Now here I am. An old, broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've ever taken. Alone. But I, I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. You definitely have feelings. Mm. It's... It's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She... wants to patch things up. Are you? Uh... I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but is... is this a bit? No. When was the last time you saw her? Three... four... I, I think. Months? Uh, years. Sit up straight. Jesus, Robert. What happened between you two? Mm. I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence. Neither of us wanted to look at each other. Both of us unsure of what exactly to do next. Oh. Fine. <sighs> Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. Always did. Things just got in the way. And before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out here to settle down. We thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. Think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became the better man that she wanted me to be. The one she always saw in me. She was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I didn't know that when I lost my wife. I was going to lose my daughter too. Robert. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy that I ruined my only real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead, my daughter hates me, and then I convince myself that this, he gestures vaguely in my direction, is going to make me happy. Why do I even try anymore? I'm so sorry. I, I know how hard it is to... No. No, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves you. You're a good person. I was a terrible husband. I'm an even worse father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. Art puts his head in his hands. I must have wanted to hear. Dude, I'm gonna tell you what you need to hear, bro. Nothing is gonna change until you do. Robert pauses. And he looks at me. There are a lot of things in my life that I regret, but I wish I could take back or do over. 
there to be so much that I can't. What I can do, and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow morning, is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. Things aren't going to fix themselves tomorrow. Or the next day. And patching things up with Val isn't going to solve all your problems either. But nothing is going to change if you don't. And you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. And you're right. Yeah, I, I don't know you that well. But you have the same capacity for good that we all have. And, and I know you can find it. Val has given you a chance. Don't waste it. But, Robert, listen to me. It's going to be okay. But... I lean over and I give him a big old embrace. I pull him in as hard as I can. He buries my head in my shoulder, his head in my shoulder, just hugging me back. It's gonna be okay. Plays a hand on the back of his head and just kind of stroke his hair a bit. He shudders and then sobs. He's crying. Thank you. We stay there for a while, holding each other. And we both eventually just drift off to sleep. Oh man. Dude, got the bars on all of it. Perfection. Lost in your oceanic eyes. I get lost in your Oh wait, 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 Danny, that's the Oh, that's a that's a that's a line from a ninja sex party song. Again, Daniel Avedon, Game Grumps, Danny Sexbang, voices Robert. He said, I can get lost inside your oceanic eyes. And that's a song in I don't know what we're oh no no, no I don't know what we're talking about, where he goes, um, oh my god, what's the beginning of the song? Uh you told me about your life, but I was lost inside your oceanic eyes. They looked so radiant as we walked into the restaurant. Oh, so great. It's such a great song. I don't know what you're talking about. And I haven't for a while. You haven't for a while. That was awesome. I have everything set up, and this is the part where Amanda... Uh, we surprise Amanda. We surprise Amanda. It's all the same as before. Too many questions. Who do you think you are, my daughter? For literally my entire life, yes. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise. And the surprise is outside. Bonus CD of the ice truck... Uh, ice truck ghost... Uh, something or other? What? Surprise! <laughs> You've got a new dad! <laughs> and it's the uh, tall, dark, and handsome one in the back who... Uh, Represses his emotions. That's delightful. You told me not to make a big deal, but you have seemed to have forgotten the entire mission of my life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. Just so we did last time. It's a graduation party. Surprise! And everybody is here. They goes to the mac and cheese bar. I walk over Mary, who's having a lovely conversation, a lively conversation with Amanda. Listen, kid, you're gonna need some real life skills out there if you're gonna make it out in the streets. I'm going to college. Hey. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink. Mm. Right? And I know you're smart enough not to drink until your legal age. Uh-huh. But hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink a glass of water between rounds. Got it! Ugh. I don't remember this piece of advice. Hypothetically. Uh -huh. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is... Uh -huh. Take a jar of pickles and drink the pickle juice? You're gonna be fine. What's going on here? Come on. Girl talk. Mary turns back to Amanda. Ugh! Oh, back. Not turns her back. Now, let me tell you about how to deal with a bad roommate. First thing to know, you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Mary! Come on. Relax. It's a myth. Ah. Supposedly. Against my better judgment, I leave them be. Hmm. I don't think I recognize that girl by the snack table. Should probably go say hello. Hi! I, I don't think we've met. Oh, we met years ago, and I'm here for my revenge. W what? Y you're Robert's kid, aren't you? Hmm? Spot on. I guess that makes you Cameron, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's nice to meet you. I'm glad Robert brought you along. He promised there would be free food, so that's kind of hard to pass up. And look, I, I don't know you, but can I get real with you for a second? My old man's a real close book, you know? Me and him, got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week, but 
You sure can get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness? It poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better. A lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I... I get the feeling you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Secretly, I'm going around the neighborhood dating all of the dads. Secretly. Just keep an eye on him when you're not, while I'm not around, okay? Or else. What? I'm kidding. Hmm. Or am I? Aww. I don't know why I'm like this. I think it runs in the family. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. And just... Jeez, your whole vibe is cool. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. Oh, this is my daughter Amanda. Uh, Amanda, this is Robert's daughter Val. Nice meeting you. I heard you're a photographer. Mm -hmm. Aspiring photographer? I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Yes? Yes? Mm -hmm. Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch you later. <laughs> it's Mary. Val walks away. She's so cool! She gave me her business card! She touched my hand! Congrats! You just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. Quarterly projections, stock market, synergy! While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta keep this party going. Catch you around, pops. Cameron! Brian, you made it! <laughs> It'll pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? Aww. It's not bad. J just... Just not bad? Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Sure thing, pal. Say, let me know if you ever want to head out on the lake. I'd be happy to pull you out, on the out of the drink again. Deep breaths. Daisy drops up. Hi. Amanda's dad? Hey! Brian's daughter! See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child. Who knows how to pay a compliment? Brian and I lock eyes for a moment. This isn't over. Not until I kiss you! Which I already did. Hey, bro! Bro! This is a real rager. Talking about the older age into consideration. Trying to be embedded at a reasonable hour. I think we've, we've, we've been through this dialogue already. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Let's hit the gym sometime soon, huh? Sure thing, dude. Brian Hazel peek on out. Hey, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all that ice cream cake. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Brian had four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel had four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'll get you guys to have you guys figure this out. Let's hang soon, yeah, Craig? Maybe Craig will be next. Looks like you've settled in the neighborhood nicely. Yeah, this is all the stuff. We we've been through this already. I'm going to get to the part with Brian. Not Brian. It's Robert. I keep thinking of Brian. Oh my god. Mm. Dude, Hugo's into the cheese, man. I've been doing my research. I bought some Havarti cheese the other day, specifically because I wanted to eat like Hugo does. And, and it was delightful. Dude, okay. Quick aside moment. Watermelon, Havarti cheese, a little bit of mint or lettuce, and salt? Dude. Oh my god. So delicious. Killer party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I uh, also have something for you, and it's the beautiful picture. Aww. This is such a somber moment. Let me cry a little bit. Oh, it's cute. Dude, seriously, go knock him dead, kid. Plenty more memories. Memories and memories and memories. But before anything else, I gotta talk to Robert again. This is my boy! It's Robert! 
I'll leave you to it. Me and the Yemenis are gonna get the ice cream. Pew. Pew, pew, pew. I'll never not feel emotional at those little final pew pews. I take a seat next to Robert as the last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. 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 Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yep. So. I had a chance to talk to Val. Mm. She physically threatened you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. She said you've been doing better. Mm. Trying to work on the vices. I also showered today. We sit in silence for a moment. Mm. You know... Every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. But lately, it's gotten a bit easier. Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night has actually helped a bit. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I like you, Cameron. I like you a lot. I, I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and I kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. He takes my hand in his... You're... Special to me. But... I have some stuff I need to work on... Um... Emotionally. Before I can get into anything... Romantic with you. You deserve better than who I am right now. I need to be on my own for a bit. To figure some things out. Of course. I, I think what you need right now is a friend. And I'm happy to be that for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It means a lot to me. And if you're ever, ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. I'm literally right next door. Let's hunt ghosts sometime. I would love that. Put my head on his shoulder. And watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. Oh, that was nice. Oh, he's like a... He's, Oh, he's got stuff going on. But that's real, you know? Gosh. That was really somber. In moments that... Dude, it's in moments like this where, like... It's a really... I feel like it's a really important reminder just to know that, like, you never know what kind of shit somebody's gonna be going through. And that even just playing along with it for a little bit... Or, like, pop out a smile to some random person. Could just be, like, just the thing that they need to pop up, even for a little bit. Or, or on the other side of things, it might just be the thing that keeps them hanging for a little bit longer. And I think that's, I think that's really profound. That's nice. Oh my god, I still look terrifying! That was lovely. That was lovely. Oh, look at... Ah, we got the little boy. We got the little lad. Oh, and he's making... He's making a little wood carving of the pupper. And drinking a bottle of Jack Daniels. That's classic. That's classic. Oh, a beautiful guy. And he's got those awesome... Did he ever put those on? I don't think I've ever seen him put the aviator shades on. Well, that was nice. And then if we go to the menu... If we go to the menu... Ah, there he is. There he goes. He's got all the full color about him. Well, that was lovely. All right, y'all. That's all I've got for you this evening. As we continue with our wonderful Dream Daddy adventure. So far, we've dated Brian. So far, we've dated Robert. And there are, what, five more dads left? We've got a Hugo, Damien, Matt, Joseph, and Craig. That's who we've got left. That's what we've got left there. I don't know what we'll be doing on Wednesday. Uh, that's the next time we'll be streaming on Wednesday, 8 o'clock p.m. As always, you can find us on all the different places on the internet. What we do here, me, like to make cocktails here at the bar with the next, and that's what we're kind of doing. Today, we tried to play around with the with a new bottle of Red Apertivo that I found at the liquor store, specifically at My Spritz, and compared it to Campari and Aperol in a Boulevardier, and it was a lot of... It was it was pretty good. We might be making some, three small little cocktails inspired by uh, Robert's love of Italian neo-realism, I think, was the genre of music. And it was a lot of fun. 
So we'll be back again on Wednesday. And further down the line, after we're done dating all the dads, we're going to make a cocktail for every single one of them. I got some ideas for Robert, uh, Brian's cocktail so far. And I got some ideas for Robert's well, too. And we'll be continuing to workshop in a little bit. If you're interested in following along for the mixology cocktail processes, I post a lot on my story on Instagram. That would be the place to go if you're also an aspiring mixologist or bartender and trying to look for a couple of new techniques or just to follow along for the, with the journey. And if you're into live streams and stuff, this is the place to be. So you're already in the right place. So to everybody out there, M, I say goodbye to you as well. And to everybody else out there, thanks for joining me until quite literally the bitter end. And uh, as we do a little bit of cleanup over here, I'll just enjoy, I'll enjoy this one in, uh, in memory of our time with Robert, which was a lot of fun. So we'll see you Wednesday, y'all. But until then, I appreciate your company. If the moon is shining where you are, have a wonderful rest of your night. If the sun is shining, but you have a wonderful, wonderful start to your day and a beautiful morning ahead. If this is the one smile that keeps you going for the day, I am immensely thankful for it. But until then, y'all, I appreciate it greatly. Cheers and bye.